Greetings my loyal minions and welcome back to another video. I hope you all are doing well and are having a wonderful week so far. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you have any comments, questions or concerns please feel free to leave a comment under any of my videos or hit me up on any of my social media accounts. If you want to donate to my channel I do have a cash app, PayPal and Venmo. Links are in the description below. You also have the choice of super chatting me whenever I'm live or you can leave a super thanks under any of my videos or live streams. Just keep in mind you are under no obligation to donate to my channel, but any bit would be most appreciated. Anyways, without further ado, let's get to. So, grab onto your neck braces and make sure they are firmly in place, grab a stiff drink, some popcorn, take a seat and hang onto your butts because we are going to be in for some more major whiplash. Well, hello you guys and welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are all doing well and are having a wonderful holiday season so far. And in today's video, I'm going to be reacting to a video brought to us by none other than Mr. Snowflake. The video is titled Victims of an Empath, an Amberlynn Reed series, episode one, Casey. Now, um, just to let you guys know, I have uh, finished reacting to Casey's interview and Amberlynn's response to the interview. And both are currently being edited at the moment. Um, I've pretty much caught up in Sean Topless, but I have yet to react to any of the recent live streams. I don't know if I'm going to, simply because, I don't know, like, if there's anything, like, remotely interesting in those live streams. But I will try to find, like, a clip-down version of those live streams and see, if, you know, if it's worth reacting to. Um, but... I'm sp spacing these videos out, uploading, just so, like, it's not so congested on my channel. Um, so, th this coming week, you're going to see multiple videos coming out. Um, so, look forward to that. Uh, so, I, I, I like Mr. Snowflake's content, and I'm so looking forward to reacting to this. So, without further ado, let's get to... I have this on 1.25, but I will speed it up if I feel it necessary. But I'm keeping it on 1.25 because, um, you know, Mr. Snowflake's... If it's sped up... His accent, if it's, like, sped up, it's kind of hard to understand. No shade! It's just, like, uh, you know, some, with my comprehension, sometimes I, it's, I, I'm it's i slow to pick up on things. So, I want to make sure I'm picking up on on things properly and not missing anything. So 1.25 it is, and unless I feel the need to speed it up. So here we go, folks. Oh. My fiance told me that she's calling me an abuser and a racist. So not only was I being physically abused, but I was pretty much being like R-A-P-E Rain and pedals eavesdrop I used the wrong word Rain and pedals eavesdrop I used the wrong word That got my blood Rain boiling Because that's not true Wow, that intro though, that was really good. The, I mean, this, it, it, I feel like I am, I'm embarking on like a, a Netflix documentary. That's the level, like the, that's the caliber of, of the video that I'm seeing so far. I'm going to say this going in, God forbid that this you know, any Amberlynn ever gets, you know, if, if any, if this content ever gets seen by like somebody who works for like a major network, because that would end Amberlynn Reed in a heartbeat. 
just like it did to Onision. Because if, you, if you've all seen the Discovery Channel documentary that was done on him, after that, his career was over and done with. I'm su I mean, at this point, I'm surprised that this isn't, that this wouldn't end in Amber Lynn, but I think it's going to take something on the caliber of, like, it being picked up by, like, a major, like, network series to really make a significant impact on Amber Lynn's YouTube career. Hi, Amber. This is Snowflake here. Number one and baby on the internet. Shaped by the algorithm, y'all. Someone recently told me about that, and I had to look it up. This is the same live stream where Amber Lynn um, made those disgusting comments towards uh, who's it? Uh, the Narc Alert. You know, when she had her, I think her stroke. Was it a heart attack? Remember that? I was like, what is that? So I don't know. Hopefully, you see this, and hopefully, you see the, the, the little clip of you from from five years ago. I watched the first episode and I had a few tears, I'm not going to lie. Talk about how you don't want to die early. Um, just as, uh, there's quite a few people worried about you. Um, I get lots of comments and, and discuss with people. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of people concerned. You are getting older. Everyone's getting, I'm getting older. I'm starting to get grey hairs in my beard now. You might have to watch the next one. Hopefully it gives you a little push to, um, to, to lose some weight. I am known as Mr. Snowflake online, and I make documentaries about interesting people. It was actually through a friend of mine um, how I discovered Amber Lynn Reed. You gotta fight for your right to Amber, yeah. Yeah, so he was a bit stuck for who to do next, um, and so I came up with a list of different lol cows. Um, I think Boogie was on there, Chris Chan, uh, and Amber was right at the bottom. Uh, and then he picked Amber, and I was shocked because I thought she was boring. I think she'll be watching this. Hi, Amber! Oh, sorry, we haven't even mentioned the t-shirts. We've gone full, we've gone full and baby. These are professional t-shirts. Was mine see-through? See-through. I'm just wondering if you can see me next. Uh, what were my <laughs> first impressions of Amber? Um, I remember liking her. I liked her at first. I think I made a few videos uh, showing some support for her. Uh, I did a couple of community posts where I was I was rooting for her. I was on her side. And I, I actually I really really meant all the videos and the posts because Amber was talking about how she was going to die. She was she was carrying too much weight. She was so unhealthy, and it did. She, she it looked like she was close to death. She looked like that for a while now. But I, I genuinely supported her at the beginning, um, and even even Jimmy did. Jimmy really meant the support. Uh, yeah, so in the start, I, I really enjoyed um, the fact that he started covering Amber because um, I'm a big fan of BBWs, which is big, beautiful women. I, I was going to say, though, should we wear the Amber shirt? Is he trolling or is he tr being truthful about that? Well, I'll just go back up here. <laughs> yeah, go on, should we wear, the, wear these to the gym? Yes. Right, Amber, we're going to go to the gym for you. We're going to do Amber reps. Actually, here what, we're going to try really hard at the gym for you, Amber. Uh, hopefully that inspires Amber. I think you meant to say Amber, aren't you? <laughs> I remember the exact moment I stopped supporting her, and it was it was during a live stream. Okay, I'll do a, I'll do a whole close. I know I, I know I ripped up the the, the Am baby shirt I had. I, I ripped it trying to be funny and uh, trying to make the viewers laugh. But that is I remember it. That is when I genuinely thought I'm done with her because because people warned me for a long time what she was like. And I thought no no we're gonna see the good in her. But when they told me watch how she treats her girlfriends, I watched and yeah. I know during that live stream we were watching how she was treating Becky. But people had already warned me how she treated her first partner, Casey. Are y'all Native American? I'm I'm Black, white, Filipino, and Mexican. My mom is. Are, do you have any Native American? Because this, my mom, my mom right here, she's the one who adopted me when I was a baby. Casey, known before his transition as Cassidy, was raised in Arizona by his adoptive mother Nadine Cordero. Growing up, Casey struggled in school and was often bullied. You know, I did a lot of dumb stuff in school. I wasn't really great in school. I was picked on, and 
You know, I, I made four choices. The world won't care about your struggles. I hate to say it, but it's true. The world doesn't care about your struggles. They don't care where you came from or where you're going. But you know what? You can care for you. Make your life worth living for you. If not for anyone else, make your life the best you can for you. Casey? That's the best advice you could give, Casey. Like, seriously. I, you know, I feel like I've gotten to really know Casey today because I, I didn't know much about him um, for a long time now. And I wish I would have really gotten into it more before the, the, the Mr. Snowflake, you know, um, videos. But, um, you know, I think Casey is a very good natured honest like kind-hearted human being that's what i'm gathering so far who's made mistakes who is not perfect who was a teenager when her when he and amber were together but like i said in my response my reaction to the interview like the dichotomy between amber lynn and casey is just so like the the different let's say the difference between Casey and Amber is just so startling. It's like look, look where Amber is now today compared to where Casey is. Casey is, you know, grown. He has a a career, a college degree under his belt. He is living his best life. He's pursuing his his dreams. You know, um, doing what he wants to do. I mean. The same couldn't be said for Amberlynn, for sure. He would seek refuge from his struggles through the use of online chat rooms. It was there where he would meet Amberlynn Reed. Casey and Amber, having shared experiences with bullying and foster care, instantly connected. Casey, who was just 15 years old at the time, entered an online relationship with Amber, who was almost two years his senior. My first true, true, true relationship was with a girl named Cassidy. We met online. Oh, we were together from 2008 to 2011, Inc. So it's almost four years, three, three and a half years. I met her online at 15. I met her in person at 16. While we were in an online relationship, a long distance relationship, I would send her pictures of my face. I made her understand that I was a bigger girl. I told her my weight and she really, really accepted that. After about a year of being in this online relationship, the pair would finally get to meet in person. When I first met her in person, it was in California because me and my mom went to California to visit my nana, and she lived in California, so she came and visited for a little bit, which was cool. We had a good time, you know, it was a good time. She told me that the first time she ever met me in person, she did not find me attractive whatsoever. I was freaking so shocked, so hurt, and so surprised. She was purely setting me down, and she was being honest that when we met in person, I wasn't attractive to her at all. Okay, when it comes to physical attraction, let me tell you guys this. I look for some, at, at, at one point her, her personality was, you know, I felt for her personality. I don't fall for someone's looks. I don't fall for, the, you know, yeah, you know, keep up with, with you know, high, high jeans, you know, whatever, but I don't fall for someone's looks. I fall for their heart. I fall for their soul. I fall for their personality. It completely lowered my soul. Well, see, when you're someone like Amber who can put on a smoke screen and act like the person that, you know, she thinks that they want. Of course, you're going to fall for that person. But, I mean, the fact that she's mentioning hygiene says a lot. The fact that, you know what I mean? Like, personal hygiene, you know, weight and everything shows that she didn't really take care of herself even back then. When she was thinner than she is now. That says a lot right there. That can be off-putting. I mean, I, I mean, it is what it is, right? You, you know, you do you take care of things like that when, when, and if you, you know, and if you can, you know what I mean. And it's not as if, in my humble opinion, Amberlynn didn't have the the resources to take care of her personal hygiene. She just didn't feel like it. Just much like everything else in her life. She will does not want to do anything for herself. I mean, we just witnessed in her video today her learning how to use a f and assembling a freaking mop and saying, this is stuff my, my partner would do. All the while having for, for years claim, claiming that she loves to clean. She loves to keep a clean house. No, you love to watch somebody make 
uh, get, you know, watch somebody clean your house and then take, like, respond, you know, take the claim, you know, take responsibility for, you know, not responsibility, but take, uh, credit for somebody else's hard work. Pathetic. Seem a great deal. And I was never the same since then. Don't get me wrong, as time went on and we lived together, like, obviously she started finding me attractive because she started to get to know my personality. It still really scarred me. No, I should, I, as, as she got to know you, she started to realize how much of a monster you are. The physical attraction. And still are. Crazy, the pair would still carry on their relationship. After meeting her for the first time in July in California, um, she was going to come down for a month because I was going to take her to an anime convention. Stay a month, whatever. She was supposed to go back. I was there for like two weeks and I called my mom and I was like, oh my God, I miss you so much. You know, because I was living with her and my grandma at the time. And on the phone, she told me, your grandma said you can't come back to Oklahoma. You can't come live with us. And I was like, what? Like, where do I go? Her grandmother said she couldn't come back. Yeah, well, I've always wondered why the grandma never wanted her back. Um, did we ever find out? Cassidy's mom was pissed because I think she knew right then and there she's going to have to take on, like, me. Okay, um, I don't, I, I would love to know why, but I think, um, you know, the, like, from the grandma's mouth, why, um, I think her grandma passed away, but I would love to know the true reason why Amberlynn was kicked out. Um, maybe somebody could, has already uncovered that, but, um, at the same time, though, I, I think, I know already, Amberlynn is, a, you know, a garbage human being, and she treats everybody like shit, and feels like she's entitled to, you know, to everything in life simply for asking for it instead of working for it because she thinks she is owed in life. And, and over time, when, you, when you're when you living with somebody like that who is a complete narcissist and does not take care of themselves, does not want to take, you know, take responsibility for everything, yeah, you're, you're going to get tired of it really quickly. And so, you know, I'm not surprised she was kicked out. And then Amberlynn comes on and says, well, um, Cassidy's mom, I'm going to say Casey, Casey's mom, you know, Felt like she needed to take on the responsibility um no she didn't nobody it wasn't K uh casey's res mom's responsibility t to take on the response the responsibility to take you in and take care of you no i don't know why you think that that she, that she that you were entitled to enforce you know force Casey's mom to take care of you. The responsible thing to do was to get you set up somewhere else. Get you, you know, you know what I mean? Like, instead of forcing yourself upon Casey and her family who are already living on a, a shoestring budget as it is. And then you, on top of it, not even, not even, um, willing to do, you know, any hard work at home you know, uh, whatsoever, do it, take any responsibility on, just sitting at home, just probably watching TV and surfing the internet. Say, it's the same thing today as it was back then. And you claim that you've changed, Amberlynn. No. The only thing that's changed is that you've managed to create a career on YouTube and now you are financially responsible for yourself, for yourself. but other than that, you haven't changed. I think it was like 450 square feet there were like no doors. Um, Cassidy and I ended up having to use the living room as our bedroom. I was, I was 16 at the time. My mom was mad. She, I mean, we didn't have a lot of money. When she's talking about her small apartment, we didn't have a lot of money. We were poor. It didn't have a bedroom door. It was like a studio with like a wall, like breaking off the uh, living room and bedroom. So she had a 16 year old to raise. Plus she was just getting into a new, my mom was just getting into a new relationship. And then all of a sudden there's someone else that's there that she needs to make sure to feed. Yeah, it made her mad. But I fought for Amber to be there because she didn't have nowhere to go. I didn't have a job. I didn't have anywhere to go. I had no car. I had nothing. And I just got done being in a foster care. So I was like, oh my gosh, like, because being in foster care, like, you're very, like, taken care of in a sense, you know? But, you know, it was whatever. I fought for her to stay. I wanted to be homeless. It was... Oh, you know. my understanding was Amber Lynn at that point, like an adult, because if that's the case, Amber Lynn, yeah, she could have stayed with Casey's family for a while, but then be like, I would have given her stipulations like, okay, you're going to only stay with, you know, you, you have to get a job, save money and get your own place. You can either, 
and then when Casey is, is grown, basically, and an adult, um, he can either choose to move out, move on, move with you, and with you, or, um, you know, whatever. Like, I would not have just taken Amber in willy-nilly. It's not, has, it was never their responsibility. You know what I mean? I know that's being harsh, but it's just like, given what we know about Amber Lynn and how she is, and the fact that she was kicked out of a family's home, like, that says a lot right there. Amber Lynn must, you know, no, Amber Lynn wasn't kicked out for no reason. I felt that was the right thing to do. I was so happy. I was like, oh my god, I'm living with my girlfriend. Like, we're so in love. It's like, so amazing. And I don't want to say I regretted it, but the things that happened afterwards, I kind of regretted our whole entire relationship. And I hate to say it, but I do regret our whole entire relationship. I do. I don't blame you. I would too. Now, Nadine, at this point, was already struggling to make ends meet. And now, she had to look after her child's adult girlfriend. So now you've got Nadine, Casey, Amber, and Nadine's boyfriend, Dave, all living in this tiny studio apartment. Did you like she Amber is. at first? Yeah. Like her? Yeah. Yeah. It was good. She was nice. Well, that's her. Brooke said. Yeah, she was nice. Was she verbally abusive? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she trusts me. Amber always seemed to be making these disrespectful Facebook posts about Dave and Nadine, talking about how unhappy she was and how much she disliked them. I hate waking up to a a-hole talking shit about me. I can hear you, dumb F. You're only three feet away from me. Are you that stupid? Obviously. Gosh, they're a-holes. I just want to effing punch them both. Jesus! She's so effing annoying. I just want to slap her, maybe even punch her. She thinks she runs the world, but trust me, she don't run at shit besides her damn mouth. Oh Amber my would go god. On to about her time in Arizona, where she would be extremely soft spoken and talking about how she was a victim of abuse while living there. She hated me. Um, so did her um, boyfriend. Uh, several times he threatened to kill me. Um, what an a-hole. I have never met someone so cruel and disgustingly rude in my life. Anyone willing to commit murder for me? LMAO, I'm kidding. Oh my god! Oh my god. Sorry, I'm stunned. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm stunned. I... Okay. I was abused there a lot. Um, in several different ways. See, I wasn't... You know, I, I admit I had my moments as, as, as a teenager. But I would never write shit like this. I was never like this. God, oh my god. I would never even dream it. Seriously, I, my parents would have had my ass if I was writing shit like this online. Uh, Dave is stupid, a stupid a-hole. Nobody effing cares about you, so get a damn life. Stop being such a jerk and a pig, then maybe people will show, will some, what treat you like a bet, like you better. Okay, I'm gonna see. Um, said she said she wasn't allowed. My options to sit are a bed and a couch. I'm not allowed to sit on the couch for lame reasons because she was probably was she bleeding at that point? Now they're saying I should have be I shouldn't be lazy on the couch all day. What the f l, -L m a o? They are crazy. All they ever do is sleep. I have to sit on the couch at your house. This is actually getting to the point where it's getting completely ridiculous. I'm not allowed to sit on the furniture. I'm not allowed to eat their food. Just fantastic. I'm living in hell. Yes. Because they didn't have enough food to go around. You're an adult, Amber. You should be paying for yourself. You're living there under the under under their good graces. Like you are not entitled to stay there. My mom never told her she wasn't allowed. It was my mom never said that. Yeah. It was Dave. So. Did she ever break any of your furniture? Said Zach. Yeah. I am scared that I'm gonna break a chair one day. I've never broken furniture in my life. So you're you're not allowed to sit on the furniture because you're too heavy to sit on the furniture because it wasn't obviously not sturdy enough for you to sit on. Okay, um, 
Dave is putting his foot down saying, you can't eat the food because you're not, you're not financially contributing whatsoever. You're not, it's not as if you are a part of the family and you have like, you know, in, in a circumstance where you're, you can't make money because maybe you have a medical condition or something like that. Maybe, maybe you have a learning disability or makes it hard for you to work. I mean, I don't know. There, there are circumstances out there. I'm in one of those circumstances, but I'm, craw I'm, I'm crawling my, my way out of it okay to change my circumstances but you know for a long time it was like because of my health i wasn't able to keep a full-time job because you know most places don't want to hire somebody that has a lot of health issues but um amberlynn had none of that like she was fully capable at the time to go and, and get a job or to go to school even like i, I don't know like do something but yet she was sitting there eating people's food, not doing anything, not even helping around the house, all the while going online and complaining about how, un how unfair her life is. What a little shit. I've never broken up furniture before. Um, yes, you have. Little backstory, I've only broken a couple things in my life. Like, I got this really, 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 really cheap chair at Walmart one time, and I used it a lot, and I ended up breaking it. Why did they hate each other, Dave and Amber? Um, it just, yeah, it just crashed. Like, yeah, she thought she knew everything about everything, every subject. Yeah, it was saying she did it or she Googled it or she known the facts. Yeah, my IQ is just, it's just overwhelmed by how smart I am. <gasps> Can I, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I need to slow this down and hear this again. Let me go back to normal speed. I'm sorry. I just want to hear this again because this is interesting. To sit on the couch at your house. I got this really, 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 really cheap chair at Walmart one time, and I used it a lot, and I ended up breaking it. Why did they hate each other, Dave and Amber? Um, it just, yeah, it just crashed. Like, yeah, she thought she knew everything about everything, every subject. Yeah, it was saying she did or she Googled it or she... Back. Yeah, my IQ is just, it's just overwhelmed by how smart I am. Another lie right there. Another fucking lie. She is dumb as F, as AF. And I'm not saying that I'm like a genius or anything like that. You know, I'm not going to put on airs or anything like that. I mean, I've taken stupid IQ tests and, you know, either I've gotten normal or like above average or whatever. I mean, I feel like I have an average, like, you know, IQ, you know. Um, but like, I, I, you know, when all boils down to it, it really doesn't matter. IQ doesn't determine, you know, a person's intelligence level. Um, and that's Stephen, Stephen Hawking said that. Um, and he's like a certified like genius, but I'm just saying like, this is another thing Amberlynn is taking credit for. She, see, she has to, to do things like this because she has no no talent, no sense of creativity, and she is not intelligent whatsoever. She can't even form, she can't even, like, form coherent sentences. Okay. She, const she's a leech in every sense of the word. Because she didn't have the kind of stability where she could form bonds and, and create, you know, experiences so what does she have to do she has to leech off other people and make up stories to have a, a sense of personality have a background and, it, and honestly it's pathetic and it's sad but she's taking it to the point even now at her at this like day and age where it's like the i think she's lied so much about herself that i she doesn't even know who she is She's is, is so invested in the lies at this point. That's that's my humble opinion. Amber, who was a legal adult, was given a choice. Either go to college or get a job. I did go to college. I was going for my associates in criminal justice. I regret going. I thought she was going for social work. Because I was like forced to go. That's like a whole other story. Yes, my mom said I was either work or go to school because I didn't want her home all day. Because I was a senior. I was a senior in high school. I, I went home all day. My mom and Dave were tired of her being home all day. My mom and, and Dave wanted her out of the house because she stayed in the house, God, 24-7 on her phone. Without Nadine, Amber would have been homeless. 
but Anna still thought it was acceptable to go online and complain, uh, like this one in particular. Um, you know, maybe if I didn't live with tolls, I wouldn't have to wake up at 5 a.m. to catch the bus to be at school at 9. Maybe if I didn't live with apples, I'd get a ride. This is insane. The sense of entitlement is just so insane to me. It's like you're living with somebody who doesn't necessarily, like, legally have to take care of you. You, at this point, are legally responsible for yourself. And I know it's hard because you're coming from foster care and then you, you were in a situation where, like, you had nothing. And that's horrible. That, that's a horrible situation. But you, you put yourself in that situation, Amber. That's the thing. You you probably did something where your grandma was like, that's it. You can no longer stay here, you know. And I think what it was is that you're too lazy to to uh, do anything like housework and stuff like that to contribute to the household financially and just in general. And you had no aspirations to go to school or anything like that. You just wanted to be a lazy, a, la a go basically what my mom calls a lazy go about and just do nothing all day. Other than just eat food and watch TV and, and go online and complain about how shitty your life is. And she still does this to this day. Now, she she's she's just lucky because she found a niche on YouTube where it's profitable and she's able to make a have a semi-stable income. But you do realize, Amber, now that everything is coming out, this, oh my God, this could affect, this could change everything. This could, you know, it, if circumstances are right, this could end Amber Lynn Reed. Like, seriously. This really could. This may, this may end Amber Lynn Reed. On YouTube. It's just joke. Without them, she'd be living in a cardboard box. But everybody yeah. who was living there, Dave, Nadine, Casey, were gracious enough to let Amber stay there and not be Yeah. Home. She was given the choice, college or work. She chose college, which didn't bring anything into the household. Yes. And Amma still felt... She could have used her loans, um, obviously, that she was... Her college loans to, um, you know... You're given, like, so much money, you know? They give you... The way that, you know, what was when I was in school, they'd give you so much money per semester. And what my parents said, they put it into a bank account. And, um, you know, I if I... You know, I, if I would have to make a big purchase, I would use that money, you know, to like get a new phone or, you know, get a new computer or something like that. And then um, use the rest of it to like throughout, you know, the, the rest of the semester to get whatever I needed to get for school, even pay for food if I needed to. You know what I mean? It was a way of of having money and, and contributing, even though I wasn't working. Um, but I was still looking for a part time job. But see, having the disability that I that I have, you know, it's, it's like. I was more focused on, you know, focusing on school and and finishing my degree than um, getting a job because I think that would have really severely impacted my grades and my performance in school. And my, my parents were inclined to, to agree with that. I'm just mad because um, I had to stop going to school. And it wasn't just because of my health. It's because they, they uh, got rid of a lot of the really good tutoring programs that I desperately needed. And... It was either I pay somebody to tutor me, which I didn't have the money for, or um, I go to, like, let's say OSU to uh, pay some, like, undergrad to tutor me. And I didn't have the money for that. Like, seriously. So, like, the resources were no longer there. Like, there was at one point I had a really good math tutor, and, like, I was in, like, an online math class, and I passed with flying colors because of this tutor. And then that program ended, and it was just, like... She was no longer tutoring. And I was like, oh, I was so mad because it was just like, she was like the most amazing like tutor that I've ever had in my life. And um, it was all done online. Like, seriously. Um, so it's like, I, I thrived more, you know, on line classes because it was like, I had no distractions because I can get very easily distracted. Um, so it's better if I'm just doing it in a private setting. That's just the kind of person that I am. Perfectly acceptable to just go online. And I'm sorry, this is not about me, but like, I just, I don't know why I feel the need to like justify like why I did, I haven't like finished my degree, but like, um, I don't 
don't know why. Like, I just felt the need to explain that. Because saying she wanted to punch your mom in the face. I didn't live with apples. I... So everybody who was living there did. Sorry. That gracious enough to let Amber stay there. Sorry, I kind of like choice. College, get bored work, a little bit. College, which didn't bring anything into the household. And Amber still felt it was perfectly acceptable to just go online and speak about them the way she did. Amberlyn is a liar. Amberlyn made a Facebook post saying she wanted to punch your mom in the face. Yeah, oh, hell no. No, no. Don't yeah. do that. Wow. Just got done cleaning. Let's see what else they have to bitch about. So not only was she contributing nothing financially, she would complain about them online. And to top it all off, she was incredibly lazy. Christina said that she even clean at any point in your house. Sometimes she do it on her own accord, but 90% of the time we had to argue with it. Did she give y'all a hard time about cleaning? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cleaning, it was an argument. She'd avoid it. Did Amber ever cook clean anything productive at all? She cooked. She never cooked dinner for everybody. She cooked if she was hungry. Why the hell am I the one who always does the dishes and cleans? I'm damn tired of it. God, the, the, the sense of entitlement. It was more of an argument, Mom. Like, I had to argue with her to clean. Like she was letting do her own things. Um, she said she was forced to wash everyone's clothes at your house. No, she wasn't. She, we, would, we asked her just to wash her clothes. or like I Gotta do my laundry in a bit. That's not fun. So she couldn't even do... Her stuff for herself. She she bought every. She thought everybody's gotta do it for me. Put a laundry mat, but she never put her clothes away. I was doing her laundry. Yeah, yes, we did her laundry. Rubbed her feet. And massaged her. <gasps> really? Doing the laundry, doing all the chores, coming home from school. You know, after a long day and having to rub Amberlyn's feet. Oh hell no! I slept wrong because my shoulder is hurting so bad. I. Cassidy better massage me for for tonight. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is a teenager you're talking about, Amber. You have no business asking this kind of shit from a teenager. You fucking Oh my god. In the book cup. Uh, you never seen her feet home. This would not be the only cleaning Amber would neglect to do. Even though Amber does claim to have back shower. It is well documented that that is not the case. Every day I was bullied. Um, I was the smelly kid. I was the fat girl. And yet we're supposed to... I mean, I understand at some point in Amberlynn's life, she may not have had the access to certain things because of the situation. I get it. Um, but obviously when she was living with Casey, they obviously had access to a shower, right? Um, but this is once again, the smelly fat kid. So as I'm saying, shit does not add up for me. Oh, I, I did dance and I, I did all this. Really? And yet you're, you're giving us this sob story about how bad things were. If it was that bad, you wouldn't have been able to do all those amazing things that you claim that you did like dancing. I know I, I harp on the whole dancing thing, but it's just like, I don't know why, but it is like, it's a thing with me. Okay. It's a thing. I don't know why. It's just, that is just imprinted on my brain because I, I simply, I think it's because, you know, I did the dance as younger. Okay. It was a, like a, a, a I'm going to say a, like a, a, an amateur career for me as a youngster. And it took a lot. Okay. It, there was, a, I did so much as a kid. It's like it, a lot of hard work to say that it's a lot of hard work. Drugs really took over my parents. They did not pay attention to us kids. It got worse as we got older. As a little girl, I did not even know the proper way to shower because they never taught me. I peed in my bed all the way up until I was 12 years old every single night. And yet we're supposed to believe you did all these amazing things as a ch kid. I, I can't. They're not teaching you how to pr shower, allegedly. You peed in your bed all the way up to tier 12. Like you... Can I really? Do, I don't know if I believe this. I, I don't know what to believe and what not to believe. But then I, at the same time, I'm just like I don't want to like invalidate her, uh, her childhood because, you know, and the abuse and the neglect and abuse that she had to go through. So it's just like what, what is the truth and what is not? 
and then Mimi said, wait, she stank, didn't she? Yeah. I do shower every single day, every single day, so don't get this, like, wrong. It's just my hair and my face is not washed every single day, or, you know what I'm saying. But, um, my makeup does come off by itself within one day. And yet she's still doing it. She's still doing it. Okay. She still does it. As an adult. Days, three days. Even though she has, she has access to a dis, uh, uh, apartment that is for dis disabled people. So she has plenty of room to get into that shower. She has no excuse at this point. But yet she still does it. Somewhere around that time. The yeah. showering was hard to get her to do. One of the reasons why Amba and Nadine didn't get along was because of Amber's poor hygiene. And that's understandable when you consider the small space they were all living in. Did Amber shower at all? Just be honest, Mom. Yeah, she did, but we had to, like, scream, yeah, like, argue with her, you know. She'd say, I'll do it right now. Okay, I'll do it right now. I'll do it right now. And... Yeah, that's what happened. She's lying. Somebody on this bus told me I smelled pretty. LOL. Oh my god. So you're some random person on the bus telling me you smell like shit? Like, oh my god. So I could never. I could never. Like, seriously? Ooh, I mean, I, I, I mean, I understand, you know, you coming from a bad background, you know. I've heard uh, horror stories. Jesus, like, it just makes me feel so grateful. It makes me feel, feel so grateful. I've I've always been a stickler for hygiene. You know, she'd say, I'll do it right now. Okay, I'll do it right now. I'll do it right now. And, but yeah, she's not every day, though, but. Mm. This unhygienic habit of Amber's would follow her for many years to come. And in one video, Amber would confess to having lied to her audience about her personal hygiene. There was a large portion of 2019, if not the whole 2019, where I literally couldn't shower. But yeah, I would bathe in bed and. It wouldn't even be frequently. Didn't you, didn't you go on to make a video of that in the shower? Prove that you showered. Hello? Is anyone home? <laughs> oh, Amberly said shower with me when she meant it. So 2019, she wasn't showering what she was showering in bed. Yet she harped on us about us pointing out that we could tell she, that she wasn't showering that frequently. Can you imagine? Imagine being around a person who has the access to bathing facilities and not do... Oh, God. I, I, I wouldn't be able to handle it. I, I, I can't handle shit like that. Maybe I sound like a, a prude for saying that. I don't know. But, like, it's just... I'm a stickler for hygiene. That's just one of my things. You know what I mean? I understand, like, if a person doesn't have access, you know, let's just say, they have issues or whatever, that, that's different. But if you have access to facilities, okay, and you're in your right mind, you know, and you're, a, well, you know, abled, okay, there's no excuse. This is stuff that you're taught as a as a child. And if you're taught that, okay, then, you know, there's no excuse. But Amberlynn's claiming, you know, she doesn't know how to shower. I mean, at some point, she would learn, right? It, it, it would come naturally, right? Right? Am I, am, am I being too judgmental? I don't know. I don't know. My, for, I mean, I'm going to say, for, in my case, in my sister's case, like, that was never an issue. You know what I mean? I, my mom, my parents never had to push me to go take a maybe like once or twice like when I wanted to like go out and play whatever and I was let's say uh playing out in the snow too much and you know I I got all dirty and musty and you know I just wanted to play even more and my mom's like no you played enough like you need to go take a bath and and warm up and stuff like that and then when you know once you get out we'll watch uh, uh you know Little Women and have some hot cocoa you know <laughs> seriously. <laughs> that was part of my childhood, you know, when I, when, I got, when the snow was really, you know, a snow day, whatever, we get our snowsuits on and like play out in the snow and then come in, have some lunch. Um, and then, you know, my friends and I would watch Little Women. Um, 
my mom would even let like my, my my best friend like she lived like literally across the street from me um you know we, we would take turns taking a bath or shower whatever and it was never it was never a problem and then my mom would have like uh like you know chicken noodle soup whatever and some hot cocoa and we would like literally just sit there and watch you know disney movies and like uh little women you know you know the one with the uh, renona Ryder and um oh, who's it uh he played batman christian bale i think he I don't, I don't know why I'm getting into this, but I had the biggest crush on Christian Bale. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I segued into that, but it's just like, you get me talking about, you know, I just had a memory and it's just like, you know, heartwarming, you know, kind of break the, 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 uh, the seriousness of the situation, I guess. He was also extremely unhappy with Stacey. He would even go as far as uploading a video titled, I was in an abusive relationship, I was with, which has now since been deleted. That's really serious allegations, you know, you're throwing. And this is saying, why wasn't Amber ever, and I, and we already, I already know because Casey explained it, but I, I, it, to me, it's just like, if, if I'm being accused of of being abusive and RAPing somebody, and that, and obviously I know it's not true, you bet your, you bet your ass I'm going to be taking legal action against that person who is making those accusations. I'd be taking them to court. That's, that's, you know, <clears throat> Casey says this, this has followed her throughout the years. I mean, the, the allegations come with it. You know what I mean? Maybe now because, you know, we all know about Amberlynn Reed and, and now, you know, she's able to speak out now, but it's just like for years, Casey has had to deal with the backlash of this and, and the allegations that Amberlynn has, has, you know, said against her like mm, I, I i wouldn't have been so complacent let's just say that i would not have been so complacent you 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 accuse me of shit like that yeah you bet your ass i'm gonna be taking you to court i was recently talking to someone who had no idea that i was in an abusive relationship before and they told me how girls who stay in abusive relationships are just lazy and that they like to be abused now i from firsthand witnessed my dad my mother my whole childhood i told myself i will never be with someone who lays a hand on me my first like live-in relationship was with a girl named cassidy i feel very um strongly about this and i feel like it's okay for me to say her name because she's transgender now so she's not cassidy no longer so i'm able to say her name because she's a once was person like cassidy is no longer here anymore obviously i'm not gonna say his new name because we're talking about her Transgender talk is too confusing, so we're just gonna leave it at that. Um, this is disrespectful. You're acting as if this person has died. Just because Cassie is now identifies Casey now identifies as a male, does that mean that 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 person no longer exists? That's disgusting. It's inhuman. It's dehumanizing. You're just trying to put distance between you and Casey with so these allegations don't hit as hard so you're you're just you know you're putting you're you're making her making Casey Cassidy okay slash Casey well I'm gonna say Casey out to be somebody who is dead that is it's so disgusting Oh my god, this is, I, mmm. I'm seeing this, I'm actually seeing this video for the first time, you guys, so forgive me. It, this is just kind of like organic, real-time, like, reaction. I know some of you have already seen this. I haven't. Okay. I haven't seen some of this shit, so I'm seeing this for the first time, and I'm just, I'm floored. I'm disgusted. I'm just... This is, this is, it's another layer. It's a, a, a whole new, a whole, like, my perspective is just really, sh this shift. And, I mean, I didn't have much hope for Amberlynn. And now what I'm hearing now and everything that I've heard from Casey in that interview, it's just really, I'll just say I have no words right now that really can accurately describe how I'm feeling about all of this. After about, mm, I want to say six months or so, things started, you know, kind of changing and shifting. 
I don't really know if I want to like go into like grave detail. Um, we still loved each other a lot. Um, after six months, we'd been together for over two years and we were living together and this and that. And I noticed we started arguing a little bit more just over stupid, stupid, stupid stuff. Like I'm, I can tell you that right now. I still remember the first time she ever got physical. We had a laundry room in the apartment complex we were living in and we were walking to a laundry This is complete fabrication, by the way. Amberlynn is the one who was abusive in this relationship. I'm not saying that Casey didn't do anything himself. I'm just saying that Amber, this is a complete fabrication. Let's just say that it's already been verified as most of this being fabrication. Laundry room and. I remember back then I would do our laundry for us. I never like people touching my laundry. I still no, really you did not. I let Destiny you do did it. not do your laundry. Okay, P other people did your laundry. You were too late to do anything for yourself. So because I trust her, but I had this weird thing of like people touching my laundry, whatever. So, well, that's not true because we've got evidence of Amber not doing her own laundry. Was that undies? Mm -hmm. Oh baby, videographic Sorry, evidence. <laughs> no, I didn't mean it like that. Crystal's a laundry machine. Sometimes I help her. You can put the um, kitchen towels right here and I'll put them in there. I do help sometimes. She was upstairs folding laundry without me because laundry is her um, chore per se, minus like dishes and feeding animals and stuff like that. So I like to do my own laundry. So I'm able to put it in the washer just fine. But Becky has to get it out of the washer for me. I can't, one, reach my arm in and bend down and grab my laundry because my stomach is in the way. I can't even do my own laundry fully by myself. Even in recent videos, we've seen Amber struggling to do her own laundry. So I guess I pull out this little guy here, liquid only. Okay, there's like a little... Yes, and I pointed this out when I saw this video. I'm just like, how is it that Amberlynn, when Amberlynn claimed me, I can do my own laundry, I can clean, I can do this, I can do that. You know, trying to be this boss bitch, which you're not, by the way. Um, You can't even do your own fucking laundry. I struggle with laundry myself. I'm not going to lie. It's it's a height issue for me. I have to get on a stool to reach down because I, my arms are too short. I hate it so much. I uh, and ours is like on the ground though. You know, it's like it's like why why was I born short? Uh, am, am I the I'm not the only one that deals with this, right? Like am I the only one? I can't be the only one that's so short that I have to get on a stool in order to reach down because like I'm always afraid that I'm going to miss something and sometimes I have and it's just like you know then sometimes carrying the wet things is hard you know like it's it's just hard when you're when you're obese you know what I mean but then I oh god the some of the mistakes that I've made doing laundry sometimes like one time I was so tired and just like let's just say did not end well <laughs> Uh, like, I shrunk something, like a, a shirt of mine, <laughs> and a shirt of mom's. Oh god, that was bad. That was bad. I'm sure you guys can relate to that. Like, have you ever done that, where you, you made that kind of mistake, and you literally shrink something to where, like, your dog could wear it? I'm just like, how did this happen? <laughs> how? <laughs> but then, there, like, there's this one time, we had a, a a maintenance guy over and like he fucked up our laundry and for the life of me i could not figure out how to like rework it because something like it was a hole to do like oh my god oh man i i just i don't like doing i i, I do it you know obviously you know i help out and stuff like that but i hate doing laundry because of just reaching in because of how short i am i hate it i hate being short you know what I mean? I really do. I'm only f like 5'2". I am short. Like if I, you know, like I remember in school, you know, we, the lockers on top of each other. I'd always ask like, can you, for the love of God, please give me a locker like on the bottom because I cannot reach up on top. Like same with the gym. Like I do not go for the top lockers. I go for the bottom ones because I cannot re reach up because <laughs> I'm short. Luckily, like they change, then my gym changed lockers where I was like, even if it's on top, it's, it's like not like so high where like I can't reach, but still it's like, 
instinctively, I always go for the bottom because I know I'll be able to reach the bottom. <laughs> I hate being short. And then, like, cabinets. Oh my god, that, that annoys the crap out of me. I have to get a freaking stool in order to get to the top cabinet to get something. And then, if so, you know, if there's a lot of things in, in the cabinet, evident, uh, eventually it just all come, like, the top, the, 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 the stuff in the front will just all come tumbling out because, like, I'm trying to balance myself on the stool and afraid that I'm going to fall off the stool and then I end up just, like, knocking things over. Man, I, sometimes I, w I, I wish I was tall that I'd be able to reach top shelves. Why am I complaining about this in this video? <laughs> I'm sorry. Liquid detergent. Okay. I don't know why I just went on that tangent. But it's like the the uh, it's like the airing the airing of grievances of being a, a short a short woman. So. I, I should do oh I should do a video called the airing of grievances. <laughs> All right. Watch me just spill everywhere. Oh, there's like a little max level. Is there a place for me to put these guys? So it's set on normal. Okay. So should that just this, be a, yeah, uh, Is this a Samsung? Today? I don't know. Why are you asking me? Um, she was helping me carry I love our I I love our washer and dryer that we have now. So much easier. Like we have a Samsung. I love it to death. Like seriously. I guess laundry to laundry room. I don't remember. My cat loves the laundry room too. She likes to sit on top of the laundry and and watch as we do the laundry, and then try to get inside beside the laundry thing, and then roll around in the clean laundry. It's a whole to do. Why my dog just sits there and just literally just watches. Like he'll watch me go to the bathroom. He'll watch the clean dishes and clean. Like he'll just sit there and watch. But he has to be a part of it. Like he has to be in the thick of things. It's so hilarious. And then my cat, my cat, like yesterday, climbed up the Christmas tree. Like, like literally, she. I don't. <laughs> I got stories, you guys. My cat, my animals are hilarious. Really, what we were arguing about. I want to say this happened. It's been. Six, seven years so oh sorry memories are kind of like fade in here and there. I but i do remember us being on the sidewalk that. and i remember her dropping what was in her hands and she took me by the throat and she started yelling at me i was like what and like i was like crying like she literally was having me by the throat just like screaming at me and then you know she let go obviously and i think i was so shocked and so numb to the situation that i kind of just let it be Honestly, that is the truth. She never really did that again. She would randomly like pinch. This me. is all fabrication. Amberlynn is actually the perpetrator. I made her really mad, and I didn't even think anything of that then either. Honestly, I didn't at all. We've been together for about three years now at this point, and I feel myself slowly. I stopped being like sexually attracted to her. I loved her though. I know that. I don't know if it was like a best friend thing. But I stopped just feeling that like connection, I guess. So when it came to intimacy, I want to say about a little bit after like two years of being together. I want to boom, bang, bang with Cassidy body. Yo, what does that even mean? I'm sorry. It started to dwindle. I don't know what that means. My fault. This is when things. I want to use really a strap bad. on. Hee <laughs> hee. <laughs> oh my god. So she's not attracted to Casey, but and then she's talking about using a strap on on Casey and would Casey even feel comfortable with that considering I think at this point Casey has her himself identified as transgender and wants to be male I don't think he would be ca ca even comfortable I mean that's just is my opinion that I don't know if you know if this is the case I don't know Casey's you know sexual preferences but like you're a freaking adult Talking about a teenager using a strap on on a teenager. In any case, no matter what the gender, you know, gender or you know, what you identify as, you're a teenager and, you, and you're dating, you're an adult dating a teenager, which, in my humble opinion, should not be allowed. Okay, you're an adult dating a teenager and you're talking about using a strap on. That, you know. That in itself, I mean, that that's ooh. okay. It's going mm, online. No, talking about strap-ons and boom bangalanging. Oof! I don't even know how to share this, but I'm gonna have to. 
Um, okay, so Cassidy was very sexually strived. Like, is that even a thing? I don't know. She really thought I was attractive. She really was sexually attracted to me and she always wanted to like have sex. She told me that the first time she ever met me in person, she did not find me attractive whatsoever. And I started Lies. feeling that for her. No. Said you wanted to use a strap on? Like, I didn't tell her that. I would just like make up things like, oh, I don't feel good or, oh, I'm on my period. Like, even though I wasn't. And just little things like that. And it made I think it was more that Casey didn't want to be intimate with you because one, you are unhygienic and who wants to get with that? I mean, Lord knows the kind of diseases she could pick up from you because you don't bathe yourself. And two, I just think, you know, Casey was just maybe like trying to figure things out with her, with himself. Okay. And then um, you put on top of that, you're in a very tumultuous, tumultuous relationship with you. Like, you know, I don't think that would um, induce any, you know, want of intimacy. I'm pissed. When you say no to someone, whether you've been with them for like a month or whether you've been been with them for like six years, if you say no to a sexual act, your partner should accept that. That is where I firmly stand. Wow, what a hot take. I think that's the law. But she didn't. And yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean. Oh my god, this is disgusting. I, I've never, I cannot believe this this video. And she would literally sit there and beg me. At first, it was like cute little bullshit, bullshit. Like, oh come on, baby, whatever. But then, as time gradually went on, it became you're gonna touch me whether you like it or not. And um, I was like, you can't force me, ma'am. I know she can. Um, that's ma'am. I it was the other way around. It was more like you are the aggressive one. You're the adult. She's a teenager. I'm sorry. He is a teenager. Who is also, you know, realizing that he's trans. Okay. There's so many factors that indicate to me that Casey is the one that was the victim in this situation. Amberlyn the aggressor. Okay. I don't believe Amberlyn's story whatsoever. This is ridiculous. This is shameful. Okay. And, you know, the fact that Amberlyn, had, to this day, has yet to even oh my god I, was this the one that was deleted from her channel when she started punching me a lot she would she would aim for my belly um she, i don't think she ever actually hit me in the face isn't that something you would remember getting punched in the face getting hit in the face i don't think she ever actually hit me you in know the what face. if it were me if, if if uh if i was being abused like that i would remember in detail about shit like that. For sure. Why did she say, I, I don't think? You would remember, wouldn't you? I don't think. Her favorite spot was my stomach. She would punch me really hard in my stomach. She'd punch me like around right here a lot. She'd punch me on my arms. She would continuously do- You know what I love about this though? Amberlynn is most definitely watching this and she's pumping her fist like, oh my God, I can't believe this is all coming out. I, you know what? I'm gonna say this. And this is just pure, pure speculation. Oh my god, I can't, I'm talking too fast. This is pure speculation, but Amber scared. Okay, that video that that I that I reacted to, you know, the one that she just came out with, I could sense it. She's fucking terrified, and I love it. I love it. It's about time Amberlynn start getting a taste of her own medicine, and Mr. Snowflake is delivering. Do it until I agreed to make love to her or have sex, whatever you want to consider it. So not only was I being physically abused, but I was pretty much being like, that is what I consider it. It was such like a bad. Oh my God. You're accusing this teenager of rap in you. What the fuck? This is so messed up. just like a bad mixture of everything and this would go on this would happen probably weekly um God, the, the fake tears the crocodile tears, tears coming where i was trying to be strong for this video <laughs> <laughs> i love how he gets out of his chair and he's like looking he's like where where are the tears I, I don't see the tears a lot of people would ask why didn't i hit her back why didn't i leave her in that you know in that stance I loved her. Um, at the time, I was confused.
Happy three-year anniversary, Cassie. We've been through a lot together, but we're still hanging in there through it all. I love you. I didn't love her like as a girlfriend. I just loved her as a person. We had such amazing times that I just felt like maybe one day she'll stop being like this. You know, maybe one day she'll stop forcing me. To have it's more like this. This is, you know, Kate, Casey should be the, is the one that, that would be saying this. You know, maybe things will get better. Maybe Amberlynn won't hit on me and, and stuff like that. She won't be abusive. She won't be taking advantage of me and my family. You're a piece of shit, Amber. Nothing has changed. You should be ashamed of yourself. And she just talks up. I was young and dumb and stupid. You're still the same person today. That's that, that's the reality of the situation. That's why this is being done. If you if, if this was a you know a happened way back when and you you were reformed you changed people wouldn't be making documentaries about you amber but casey was right that she has she has uh um learned to let's say hone in her skills of being a nar a liar and a manipulator this is why it's being done to expose you to expose the truth and just and to mm, I'm not going to say it because I can't say it on YouTube. For one day, she'll stop hitting me. Not only was she hitting me because I wouldn't have sex with her, she was hitting me if I wouldn't do the dishes on time. She would push me up against counters. And they wanted you to do the dishes to contribute to the household. You're, oh my God. This is just, this is slander. That's the word I was looking for. This is pure slander. For the love of God, Casey, why in the... I understand your, your your why you didn't, but oh my God, Casey, you should have gone after her for this. You should have taken legal action. Then you, you and, and you not doing so, you you have allowed this to continue. Amberlynn could have faced real time and real consequences for this. That's what I'm saying. The one thing I'm I'm angry about with Casey and. It's the fact that you know when you don't speak up and you don't take action, you're you're allowing this person to continue with this this kind of behavior, and allowing other people to get hurt. I'm not saying you know this is all Casey's responsibility, okay? But it's just like you had a you know you have a chance, had a chance to take legal action against Amber, against the slander at least. Her and have her face legal reper repercussions, whatever they, that, that may be, and you didn't take it. Next time, for the love of God, take it when when you can. Because see, I don't think Amberlynn will, though, not publicly. I think anything she does now is going to be covert. Because Amberlynn is too chicken shit to to really, you know, to try anything. One thing she never did was she never like called me names never and i was like living in that like moment of six and stones may break our bones but words will never hurt me type of thing um where it's like okay hitting people blah 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 but if like she started emotionally hurting me then i should leave now amber says casey never called her names there was, there was no emotional abuse however amber's clearly forgotten all the posts she's made on ask fm how did your partner abuse you in arizona she would punch me slap me scratch me strangle me abuse me with her words think of someone you dislike now try to think of at least one thing that is good slash nice about them i will not say who this person is because it is just easier that way you never know who reads your things online lol but i used to live with this person they would do and say harsh things to me they practically ruined a few years of my life making me feel like i was scum of the earth i would often sit in my tiny bedroom and just do nothing cry gain weight all because of this person and to this day, Amber Lynn is going to is going to sit and say, back up her bullshit. She even did she and the thing is she was too chicken shit to real but then again, I understand why. I'm trying to save faith, but she was really too chicken shit to really refute these allegations. She won't. She's too much of a coward to really refute. Because she knows. If she steps out of line, Casey will take action. And she has the, the means to do so now. And, and, the, and the fortitude.
because the KSC said she didn't have the fortitude back then, or possibly the means to do so. That ain't the case now. The, this doc, these documentary series on YouTube, the Mr. Snowflake, these are this this is the consequences of Amberlynn's actions. I'm gonna say this. This is possibly Amberlynn's karma. Casey's fault, the way it gave. So there she says they would do and say harsh things to me. Hmm. This is sit in my tiny bedroom and just do nothing. Cry, Hold can't on. wait. All because of this person. Casey's fault, the way it gave. So there she says, they would do and say But I used to live with this person, they would do and say harsh things. Harsh okay. things to me. Sorry. This isn't me catching her out, this is Amber catching herself out. I remember one time particular, I don't remember what the argument was. Um, her mom was in her room, a very small apartment, so we were like arguing in whispers, like so she couldn't hear. I'm not pretty sure she got the gist of it because Cassidy started hitting me really hard. It was probably one of the worst ever. I was kind of just like, you know, blocking myself or at least trying to. And Cassidy's mom came in and all she said is, Cassidy, what are you doing? And then walked away. So now, not only does Amber want us to believe that she did her own laundry, which we know isn't true, but she wants us to believe that Nadine came into the room, saw this brutal beating going on and said, what are you doing? And then just walked out. Maybe it, happened, maybe it happened like that. Maybe it didn't. Didn't. The whole time I lived there, I really hoped there was a moment where Cassidy's mom would see. I thought maybe she'd be my hero and like somehow change the way Cassidy treated me. I thought maybe her and I would be- You really think that her mom, Cassie's, Casey's mom, is going to back you up and, and instead of her, to, her son? No, I don't think that, that, that's not how this works, Amber. Cassie's mom is not, Casey's mom is not going to take your side over her own sons. Let's just say that. No way, no how. My God, you're delusional. I had a friend like that, you know. You know, she uh, didn't, like I said, didn't have a really good home life. She had a mom, though, that, that did care about her. Okay. But except that, you know, her her mom had her own issues and stuff like that. But she she was very much, in some ways, like Amber, you know? But not to the intensity. But it was like... Because my mom is such a good listener and, and stuff like that, she would come over, not to hang out with me, but to hang out and, and you know, and, and talk to my mom. The whole visit, her coming over and hanging out would be just her and my mom, her and my mom talking. And then she started acting like that, you know, her mom loved her and over me. And and I'm the, and I I had to, you know, dress her down at one point and say, you know, it's never going to happen the way you think it's going to happen. You know, my mom isn't going to, like, take your side over mine, you know. It was like, at some point she was trying to uh, make it as if I was a bad person and that, you know, I'm doing, you know, I'm doing bad, you know, I'm doing stuff, whatever that I shouldn't be doing and, um, trying to turn my, basically trying to turn, in a way, turn my mom against me. But it's trying to act like she was a part of the family and stuff like that. All the while, I, I was stupid enough to, like, crave her friendship because I didn't have a lot of friends, you know, at the time. You know, because the friends that I did have were, you know, two hours away, you know, and stuff like that. So it was just like, I was trying to hang on to the friend that I had. But it was really, like, disturbing because I'm just like, I'm thinking to myself, I, I started getting angry and a little bit jealous because I'm thinking to myself, why are you trying to, like, what, become, like, a de facto, like, de, like chi sibling or something like that? Like, no, my mom isn't going to, like, take on you know, take, you know, take your side or, you know, over her own, her own daughters, you know, like, you know, she'll listen to you and be like, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? She'll be a listening ear and try to, and give you advice, but she's not going to like take you in and treat you like as if she or her, her lost daughter or something like that. I'm not trying to be mean when I say that, but it's just like, I had friends like that, like they try to do, you know, I, she tried to do that. Like she, it was, it was weird. You know what I mean? So it's like, 
oh my god, it's I just reminiscent. This whole story was is reminiscent, you know. Amber really thought that her that Casey's mom would would spurn her own dot her own son for Amber's sake. I considering Amber is the actual perpetrator in the situation. It's disgusting. Come closer because she saw I was in a relationship because me and Cassidy's mom were never close. She didn't do anything about it. Oh yeah, to answer the question of like, why didn't I ever hit her back? Because I, <sighs> my brother used to hit me a lot when I was a teenager. He's strong. Like he might be my little brother, but he's my big brother, you know? And um, he would hit me a lot. That's just what he did. And he would emotionally fuck me up in the head and he did a lot. Like. I felt like my own brother hated me for a while there, but that's a whole other subject. Um, but when he first started hitting me, I would hit him back for like self-defense. And it just made him more angry and more mad. And the punches got worse, the bruises got darker. And I didn't want that with Cassidy, I was scared. I was way too scared to hit back, so I never did. Why does she sound like she's doing my um, calling in sick to work voice? I can't come in for me, Chip. The bruises got darker. I think what drew the line with me and Cassidy was um, her and her mom. This was like one of the worst it's nights. Complete in the world. fabrication. I do not believe a word that's coming out of this woman's mouth. Like I can't even. Okay, Cassidy was mad about something. She pushed me up against the counter. Um, she got a knife and was throwing it in my face and saying she was gonna stab me. I was like, yeah, right. Like, um. Well, so now, so now Amber wants us to believe that Casey, who has been punching Amber, scratching her. Amber with words, depending on what time of day you ask Amber. Now Casey's got a knife. She's got a knife in front of Amber's face. Jesus. And Amber doesn't seem too bothered. I'd be more concerned if this person who's been has a knife. I'd be really concerned. And then she started Bitch, boobs. I'd be calling the police. Like chest, trying to like get my boobs. <laughs> Cassidy's mom came out and blamed it all on me. And then Cassidy's mom threw this like big clear ashtray right to my head. Again, it's just it's so strange. This this traumatic thing of well, it sounds traumatic, having an ashtray thrown off your head. It sounds like it would really hurt, but where Amber's describing it, it's almost like, I don't know, it's almost like it's a Laurel and Hardy sketch. It's just something, it's just something comical, the way she, whoop, like, what? I don't know. Maybe I'm biased, but I did not You know what I think? I'm Amber okay. Lynn found, this, there must be a story somewhere out there of something very similar happening to somebody. And she read this and was like, you know what? I'm just going to come online and say this. This is going to get me tons of views and engagement, whatever. I'm going to get so much money out of this. This is going to help grow my channel. You literally grew your channel off the back of defacing innocent people. You disgusting human being. That's what I think this is all about. This is all. Amber Lynn did this for drama, for the purpose of drama. Genuine trauma from any of this. It hurts. It is disgusting. It is vile. Like, if she has any supporters left at this point, I'll be. I I, I question the people who are will support her after this. I really do. So bad, and in that moment, I was like, "Why am I here? What am I doing?" The only people who can feel this way and understand what I'm saying is people who have been in an relationship. As much as like your boyfriend or your girlfriend will hit you, you still love them and it's 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 so unhealthy. And I just want to tell you guys. I feel like she's reading from a script, from a story. That she watched maybe a video or something or a testimonial or something on YouTube and was like, I'm, I'm gonna do this. Cause she, this is what she does. She spends, uh, in this, I, I'm, I'm getting a picture here and may, maybe, um, I don't know if I'm off about this, but I think this is what she does with, with her time when she's not filming. She goes online and then looks for stories and, and stuff in other people's lives and picks and chooses what she's gonna, what she prefers. And then she's gonna write down story you know in her journals and say okay i'm gonna make up this story and then i and do that and say this and that and, and stuff like that all for the sake of content all for the sake of the sympathy factor amberlyn you are a sick human being you you are truly sick 
nothing about what you say on your channel is in any way genuine. You just steal and from other people. I don't think she's ever, at this point, ever been really truthful about anything she says about herself. I'll be, you know, you know what I mean. I, I wonder what her mom has to say about this. By the way, I doubt anything will be said. Amberlyn's right now trying to do damage control and sweep this under the rug. If anyone emotionally hurts you, sexually hurts you, or physically hurts you, don't stand for it. Don't, because it ruins you and through everything, like, you find it so hard to trust people and it's so hard to open up and you have this, like, guard up that could really just mess up your world and it, it just, it's not good. I've actually seen better acting from Tommy Wiseau. Oh, hi, Casey. Is that a night? Uh, but I've seen... And this is Amber Lynn, yeah, putting on an act. She is acting. For the sake of sympathy and views. She's an attention whore. That's what she is. I feel sorry for me because I've been in a, you know, this relationship. Even though I'm the one that's the abuser. But I'm going to create this story. I'm going to steal this story. And you know just. She stole directly from Casey. Maybe she just. Maybe what she's doing. She's doing a, uh, she's doing a reverso. Okay. And stealing Casey's abuse story from Casey and making she's making it out to be that she's the one that experienced these things but Amberlynn is retelling the things that she's done to Casey what a shit move what a dick move am I like my parents did I just choose a different outlet you know and um it's like my brother he is an addict but he chose drugs. Her and her mom. This was like one of the worst nights in the world. Like, I can't even. <laughs> and I didn't want to talk about any of this. Oh my god, my mascara. <laughs> nobody, and I mean nobody, deserves to be hit by their boyfriend or girlfriend. Or their wife or husband. Nobody. I have learned a lot being with Cassidy and, um... If you guys are wondering, yes, she is now a he, and um, it's been a long time, six years since I was with her, and um, we talked- Stop misgendering him! You are purposely misgendering him to, to, to be an asshole. Stop. You're, you're, you claim to be a part of the LGBT community? Be supportive of the LGBT community? Stop misgendering. This is, this is where the rumors of her being a transphobe comes from. I get it now. On Facebook here and there. What? <laughs> we, we still chat now and again. This is a person, apparently, who has beaten her, had a knife at her throat, um, gamble with his words, maybe. Um, all this horrible stuff, and we, we still chat now and again. And then, and then Amber has the nerve to upload this video, claiming I was... We still chat now and again on Facebook. Yeah, I I'm sorry, but it, it, if there was an ounce of truth to this story, I wouldn't be chit-chatting and trying to befriend my freaking abuser and ape apist. Ari apist. Heck no. I would, if it were me, I would have like a restraining order. I would, I would have taken this person to court. You know, I would have done everything I could legally to make sure this person is behind bars and, or pays for what they've done, which is what I, I'm not saying that Amber Lynn RAP'd Casey, but I can, from what I surmise, I, I think Amber Lynn did definitely uh, uh, abuse Casey to a point maybe where, yes, yeah, some legal action should have been taken. Again, it doesn't sound like the actions of somebody who has gone through this this ordeal, this, these years of abuse. Things are very different, and um, she regrets everything she did. We still chat now and again. It's different. Yeah, it should be different. It's ridiculous. It's, 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 it's insane. But I'm kind of at that point where I might cry about it now. You, did, you didn't even cry then. But I've healed. 
and I'm stronger <laughs> because of it and I've learned because of it and I just figured I'd share the story with you guys because that is a big part of my life that I went through. Me and Cassidy were together for four years before I was like, eh, closing the door, I'm done. It does not matter at all that if we were in a relationship or that we're lesbian, she forced me. And a lot of people can question, how is that possible? It's very possible. It made me feel so like degrading and gross and grummy and <sighs> I'm done. But um, I just figured I'd share this with you guys and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in my next video, bye. Uh, yeah, I loved it. Hilarious. It, that was. I'm so glad that I finally got to see that video. I'm feeling. What does a friend she say? I'm feeling really punchy right now. That let's just put it at that. Very punchy. And I wish you know. I need a drink. <laughs> I, I I need a drink. Um. Hell, I don't smoke, but hell, at this point, I'd need a ciggy. Before I got into doing YouTube, I worked with vulnerable kids and adults. And I've heard a few stories, I've heard quite a few stories similar to what Anna's telling here. And not once have I ever not believed anybody who's told me that type of stuff. Not once. It's never popped into my head that I should not believe this person. I'm always left with. I don't know, lump in your throat, or a bit teary. And you go home, think about it. But when I'm listening to this story from Amber, it's so unbelievable, the way she's telling it. The things, well, she catches herself out. She, she, she didn't, she doesn't let anybody do her laundry. We know that's not true. Uh, Casey. You know, basically, you know a liar when you see one, right? Because it would resonate. It would, I mean, if, if it was true, yeah, I'd be, I'd be teary -eyed teary-eyed right now. I mean, I got really teary-eyed when I was listening to Casey's story. And, and you know, and, and, and Becky, from what Becky has said, you know, I, I, yeah, it did bring me to tears. I'm not gonna lie. It's, No one should have to go through this and then have it follow you for years because this death bat on YouTube exists. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, Amber Lynn, oh God, just, I feel like, you know what? I feel like maybe, so, am I, are we re as reactors and, you know, allowing Amber Lynn to continue to exist on YouTube? Are we contributing to the problem? Like, to the point where, the victims are being of Amberlin's ab abuse, like are still being affected. I, 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 I can't help but wonder that. I'm sorry. He never put Amber with, with his words, but then in earlier posts, apparently Casey did. It's so unbelievable. You don't want to say anybody's lying about something like this. You just automatically. No, you lie. don't. Oh my god, it's true. It's horrible. But I don't. I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Neither do I. Because you know, I, I, you know, um, you know, someone tries to stop you. Somebody allegedly RAP you or is abusing you, like. It's just so unbelievable, you know? But then you want to befriend this person that... No. Logically, anybody who has been really been through that would not be trying to f be friends with their abuser, with their R-A-P-A-S. Do you know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't make sense. Logically, it does not make sense to me. Casey found out about Amber's video when people began sending the video to Casey's family. Casey would go on to make a video and live streams denying Amber's claims. Today, um, I was told by my fiance, someone messaged her on Facebook and it was a link to a video. It was a video of my ex, my ex Amber. My fiance told me that she's calling me 
that got my blood boiling because that's not true 100 percent not true it pissed pissed me off to no end everything in that video was such bull that i can't even i can't even describe the bull that was in that video so it was probably three months three four months after we started living together we were up one night i don't remember why we argued i don't but she grabbed my arm with her nails first time any physical that was negative and i remember that clearly it shocked me now watching casey's video it's very different to amber's the use of language is different amber is very i think i think and, and maybe memories are, are fading here we see this idea that words and phrases that leave options open are connected to lying like using the words may or might or the phrases i think so or if i remember correctly I don't think she ever actually hit me in the face. Memories are kind of like fade in here and there. This would happen probably weekly. I think what drew the line with me and Cassidy was. So the idea here is that the individual is keeping their options open. So if they get caught in a lie, they can pivot and get away from that. Whereas Casey is, I remember that clearly. Big difference. I, I didn't know what to make of it, really. I'm 16 years old. I knew what physical was, but not really. I mean, I was a kid, I was a child. So I just assumed, okay, I made her mad. Now the thing what she said with the laundry, that's a big false. Big false. Wanna know how I know that? Because me and my mom would do her laundry. Me and my mom would go do laundry. She wasn't getting up to do laundry. She maybe did it a couple of times, a handful of times, probably counting on my one hand. She didn't do it all the time, at all. And me dropping the bag and choking her, I never, ever did that, ever. I, I mean, what's the reason for me to do that? I mean, I. I didn't you have no motive. You literally have no motive. You're a teenager. You're trying to figure shit out. Like, she doesn't have the, the temperament. Sorry, he, sorry. He doesn't, based on what I've seen of Casey, I like to think I'm somewhat good at reading people. Casey doesn't seem to have the temperament to be that kind of person. Amberlyn does. And yes, the language does matter, most definitely. And I'm 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 starting to feel upset in my gut. You know, I I you know I, I, I if I cry during this, I'm sorry, like because you know this stuff really guts me. And I don't know where the story came from. I didn't do it at all. Now, the places she said about being hit. Those were on me. Those were the exact places she hit me. I was the one being abused. And I will say this, I may I may have laid a hand on her a few times. That was in self-defense. I didn't do it, and I damn well did not rape her. I did not rape her. Period. The thing, the thing is, what kind of sicko would take somebody else's abuse story, especially the one you're abusing, it is so messed up. I have no words. There are literally no words adequate in the dictionary to describe how messed up that is. One time, when my mom and Dave were out, I don't know why we argued, but I was put on the bed. She wailed on me. Beat me real bad. I remember this clear as day. Memories are kind of like fade in here and there. There was, our bed was in the living room. You know what I would have done? Okay. My instinct would have been, you know what? As I get myself out of that situation, lock, get, grab a phone. Or if I couldn't grab a phone, lock myself in a room somewhere in the house. And, you know, wait for someone to come and help me. Or get myself out of the out of the of the apart that place, or you know, find a way to get get a hold of the authorities. Like seriously, I would have had Amber arrested. Plain and simple, she should have been arrested. The fact that Amber Lynn wasn't arrested didn't face any legal repercussions whatsoever. Really grinds my gears really has my my blood boiling but i understand i get it i get it
you're a teenager, you're scared, you don't know what to do. You have this, 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 this girl that you're that claims you cl claims you're in love with, or you know, she's in love with you. You're, you know, you're in love with her, and or whatever, and they're beating on you. I mean. I was to say, I've never been in that situation. I don't know what, I mean, I don't know what I would have done, but I'm just saying scenarios of what logically one would do. You know what I mean? Like get a hold of, you know, get yourself to a safe, safe space. You know, call the police. You know what I mean? Like, Next let's just say I, I, you know, I, I would have used, you know, that opportunity to arrest, have Amberlin arrested. You have, and you have the physical proof on your body that this happened. The bed was a dresser. In front of the dresser. There are ways forensically that, you know, um, that the, the police could have uh, handled the situation. Be, you know, okay, uh, um, for any of Euphoria fans out there, if you remember the episode where Nate, played by Jacob Elordi, okay, um, his character Nate, Nate um, choked Maddie, his girlfriend i can't remember the, the the actress's name um and then there's this whole episode where um the police get involved and there's a scene where they take maddie into the police station and she you know she's you know she's in a toxic relationship with with uh with nate okay and um you know she's trying you know even though she knows she shouldn't be with nate she's still defending him okay and so the parents find out that she was getting beat on by Nate, basically getting choked. And so they take legal action. Okay. And what the police do, they have to take Maddie in. They had to strap her down to the table with handcuffs, but they had to, they literally took samples of the, of the areas of where Maddie was beat, whatever. And I think Nate faced, uh, well, he didn't really... Let's just say uh, he got off scot free. Whatever. I don't know. I can't remember how how it came about, but like he he didn't face a lot of repercussions, in my humble opinion, because of his his family status in the community. But um, there are ways of 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 um, getting get, gathering evidence of the abuse. And I just remember that scene where Maddie is literally handcuffed to the table, and they're literally like taking samples of um from the areas where um she was grabbed and stuff like that and i remember the with the cop like what the female um cop said to maddie and she goes we think this is love this is this is not love you know but maddie was so insistent on being with nate you know because you know she was emotionally dependent on Nate and see Nate the character is you know a psychopath he's a narcissist like you know oh my god like I love Euphoria you know and Nate's a very 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 dark and complicated character but um you know just kind of reminds me of you know this, this situation you know if if they would if, if Casey's mom would have taken the initiative that could you know Amberlynn could have faced some very serious charges. We'll just say that. Was a table. Between the table and the bed. And then on top of it, you know, later on, Amberlynn could also face serious charges for accusing Casey of doing these things to Amberlynn when in fact that, you know, Amberlynn did it to Casey. But see, Casey's mom should have taken the initiative, in my humble opinion. Okay, and, um, taken Casey to the, the police station, gotten the forensic evidence, and then take it, make, you know, take it, having Casey to take a statement, and then, you know, Amberlynn would have gone to jail. Juvie, whatever. No, actually, no, she would have actually gone to actual jail. Or prison, or whatever. Seriously. Hands down. And I know this just simply because I watched Euphoria, yeah, and I remember that scene. Like, so it's just like, uh, you know, over me, wailing on me. At that point, I was 17 years old. Still a child. Casey claimed that Amber was actually copying the abuse that he suffered. 
and it wasn't the only thing that Amber would copy. She told me that she had anxiety. I ha I suffer from anxiety. I suffer from panic and anxiety disorder. I was diagnosed with anxiety slash panic disorder after I was diagnosed. So. And she has still maintained that diagnosis to this day. Um, today I'm gonna tell you guys my coming out story. This video is about my coming out story. My mom found out I liked girls because I wrote a, a love note to Lucy. <sighs> I was writing a letter to my friend about her saying how I do like this girl, da -da -da -da, and I don't know how to tell my mom, I don't know how to tell my parents. And I left it in my pants and she went to do laundry and, well... The notes, I guess I never ended up giving it to my friend and I left it in my pants pocket and my mom did my laundry. She found it, so... You can only imagine what happened there. And I, I was. Wow. Amberlynn is just a thief. You're so unauthentic, so unoriginal that you steal somebody, your ex. Not only did you beat on your ex, abuse them emotionally and physically, you steal their coming, a very personal story. Amberlynn. I don't care who you claim to be now. You are, because I don't think you have changed one iota, but you are genuinely, without a doubt, the biggest piece of shit I I've ever come across. I was trying to lie to her at first. I finally said, yeah, but I did the safe route. At least I believe it was a safe route and I came out as bisexual. I had explained to her that no, I don't just like women. I am bisexual. But anyways, I'm coming out to parents. Um, my mom actually found out through a note I wrote to a girl. But coming out to your parents, it's um it's whatever you feel comfortable with, really. It's 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 you gotta trust that they'll understand. Oddly similar to what Amberlyn said about her coming out to what do you mean? What's similar, Linda? What is the worst thing Amberlyn ever did to you? We got in an argument one night. And I forgot what the argument was about. And it was already dark outside. My mom and her boyfriend went home. All I remember was I was on, I was, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily say thrown, but I, like, fell back on the bench, just continued to hit, 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 hit. Like, God, I was just, like, trying to at least block my face. But just hit, hit, slap, slap. And then she, like, slammed the door and took off walking to the store. That was the worst. That was the scariest and worst night ever her over me hitting me i remember that clearly it, i couldn't i couldn't take it like i didn't understand like it just escalated it escalated so quickly and i didn't know, i didn't know what was going on i was i was 16 17 you know 15 16 17 I, almost 18 years old she left before i turned 18 i didn't know who would believe me all my, i knew was my friends believed me because i would come to school with bruises up and down on my arm trying to make excuses like oh i fell off my bike oh i fell off my skateboard my friends asked me what's wrong what, what, what happened to you Eventually, they figured it out. So every time I would come to school, upset, in tears, Amber again, shrug, didn't say anything. My mom figured it out later on, but I'd have to hide it from her. Why? Because I didn't want her mad. I didn't want her upset. I didn't want her to worry about me. She had so much other things to worry about. And then I found out about the disgusting with bruises, and then she would lie to me. I mean, I understand. I understand. I mean, but if, if I was my mom and it was still going, you know, the mom and I was still going on, and if it was still there, I would take legal action. I would take my dot my my son to the you know my my child to the police department, emergency room, whatever. I would do whatever I need to do and get that piece of shit out of my house and get that piece of shit arrested. I would have kicked Amber Lynn out onto the curb, not caring that she would have been homeless. Let her her being homeless would have been her 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 recompense, her, her, her karma. Amber Lynn does not deserve, the fact that Amber Lynn was still allowed to stay there until they broke up. She should have been homeless. I know that's harsh to say that. Nobody deserves to be homeless. But she didn't deserve to be there either. Amber, Amber Lynn could have gone to a women's shelter. A halfway house. Maybe at least there she would have to take care of herself and learn to res take responsibility for herself. It's safe. It's in her video, she said your mom walked in on you beating Amber up. I never beat her up. 
And the thing about my mom throwing a glass ashtray at her head? No. Uh-uh. She was very disrespectful to my mom. She threw a glass cup at my mom. It shattered on the wall. There was still a hallmark when they moved out because of that. Can your mom tell us her point of view of the ashtray incident? I don't even know what you guys were arguing about. But she threw it and she it ended up hitting the wall making a big hole in the wall. Yeah, it was like, oh, it was a glass one. It shattered on impact, too. Yeah, she said you threw it at her. She would get mad and yell because of how disrespectful she was being, but she never laid a hand on Amber. Ever. Never. My mom's boyfriend and her and Amber didn't get along. There was a lot of fights. I defended Amber. Does she say that? No. Does she say how I defended her against everything else that was put her way? How I lost friends over defending her ways? No. Why? Because she wants to play victim. That's Amber learned to a T. There was more than just physical abuse. When you were with Amber, was she emotionally abused? Not just physically, but emotionally. Uh, yes, she was. Yes, she was. The story about that, how I learned that she was that as well, is because uh, I was having anxiety attack. I called her. Uh, I stayed home from school that day. I called her. I was, like, really upset. And she yelled at me over the phone and made it seem like it was my fault. So, and it was just, it was a, it was a lot. It was a, a roller coaster of emotions. One time, when I was getting ready for school, Amber went through my phone. Want to know how I know that? I got went to school. My friend CJ sees me, punches me in the arm. What the f*** did you give Amber my number for? What? I didn't give Amber your number. You don't like her. She don't like you. Why should she have your number? Chose me. Pissed my friend out. And I texted Amber. The f*** is wrong with you? What the hell? Why are you messaging CJ? How'd you get her number? Yeah, I went through I your phone Alex. while you are getting ready for school. When I would hang out with my best friend Alex. She's been my best friend since high school. And all of a sudden, I get text messages an hour later bitching me out for hanging out with her. She went as far as to accuse me of sleeping with my best friend. I couldn't understand why this girl that I cared about at one point was doing this. I couldn't. And I lost a lot of friends because I guess, I, I don't know if she did that to more of my friends or not. But me and my friend CJ are still friends. I still have a, a good amount of friends, but I don't understand the reason why she did that at all. She tried to take my friends as her own. Um, she tried to make friends with my friends, but they seen how she was faster than I did, so no, she didn't take any of my friends. And then time, I, I love to draw. You guys seen my draw? She, she, Amber Lynn is a leech. She, in de, in the, de, the most extreme degree, she will take your friends, she will take your family, your personality, your, your identity, everything about you. She will consume your life. She's like a virus. A plague. What happened was I was drawing I was drawing a collage of sailor Uranus. Like, let me get a paper. Like it was like it was like as big as this. And we got in an argument and what she did was here, I'll use the baby thing as an example. What she did was she got a she got a pencil and she just And she locked herself in the bathroom. She she ruined my picture. Like, it took forever to draw that, and she ruined it. I was told I should share this with you guys as my supporters. It was a list I made when I was in therapy. This is all the stuff that I, I uh, had to deal with. And I, I'm sorry. Get a little emotional. So here's part of the, the list. Now, it is hard to read, but... Some of the things on that list are ask to cuddle, do whatever she asks, spoil her, do things she likes, don't bore her with my interests, uh, don't talk much, speak when spoken to, don't spend money on myself, and don't make her repeat herself. And this was a, especially the part where I thought it was normal to be hit at one. That was bad. Jesus. Jesus, this is this is insane. This is insane. This is Amber's real opinion on domestic violence almost three years after her and Casey's breakup.
So somebody asks Amber a question on the website Ask FM. They say, my husband hits me, but then says sorry, and then again gets and violent because I can't forgive him so fast. He loves me to bits, otherwise what should I do? I hit him back too and called him names only because I was angry. And Amber's response, people do things and say things that they don't mean when they're angry. I'm not saying it's right because it's not. I constantly say horrible things when I'm angry at someone. I then later regret it. Words hurt worse than fists do, but we all seem to never speak upon that kind of violence. I'm one of them because my honest opinion is never be with someone who abuses you all the time. I'm not saying physical violence is okay, but people do slip. A push, a shove, a scratch, if it happens once or twice, it's something you'll always remember, but it's something that just happened. It doesn't make you an ab But if it constantly happens, don't allow yourself to be in that situation. No one deserves it. Uh, I look at now. This was this was to say this when you are the abuser. Oh my god, I can't. Not a relationship. This was the lack of self awareness. Slave. This was slavery, and at one point, I really did think it was normal to be hit, and that was not right. Slavery. Oh wow. According to Casey, Amber had been physically oh and emotionally abused, and apparently had also been unfaithful as well. When we were first dating, I got a message from her, upset. She made out with a girl while we were dating, while she was still in California. The last time I cheated was about 16, 17 years old. Um, I was in a long distance relationship with, um, as you guys know, his name is Casey. Before we met each other in person, when I was, uh, you know, when I was a sophomore here and she was still in California, and then Amber told me she out twice with, with one of her friends that was a girl in, in a hot tub. And so that, that hurt me. Where is the wildest place you have had sex? I have a dream though, hot tub dream. We don't need to discuss that hot tub dream. Though. I actually posted um, on was it Instagram. Sorry, I'm starting to. Um, I posted on Instagram uh, my yearbook, and it was like uh, my yearbook quotes and like questions, like what do you love? Blah, blah, blah. And at the time, I put Amara because um, that was the name that he gave me for him. And when I filled that out, I was 17 years old. Um, so yeah, I. I did cheat on him um, when I was 16. Did I get mad? I got upset, but I was 15. So what am I gonna do? Forgive, forget, you're my girlfriend. I was a child. When me and him were actually living together, mm -hmm. um, I several times tried to break up with him and then I would feel guilty and stay. Uh, she felt guilty, so she stayed. I think reading between the lines, she had nowhere else to go. But yeah. So you stayed and became in position on everybody because you were too lazy to take care of yourself if it were me if i you know i don't know i mean i mean if i was a mom and i knew i think uh, casey she like you said he was hiding it from the mom and the mom was working a lot because she was trying to dress in, you know with the new job and everything but if if i had a whiff that my child was being abused by my child's partner that was also living with us, I would be kicking that piece of shit to the curb. Not caring if that person became homeless. It's not my, not my responsibility. You hurt my child, that's where it begins and that's where it ends. Plus, not only would I be kicking that, that piece of shit to the curb, I'd be taking legal action, making sure that person got arrested. Let's be honest. So I suggested, okay, let's be in an open relationship then because I was not happy. I was, I'm not going to get into why I wasn't happy, okay? Because we, we already know and yeah, so. Amber felt comfortable enough with her and abuse to suggest an open relationship. The open, rela the open relationship thing, that I will, I will talk th about that. Yes, that was true because I felt like if I allowed it, it like it would help us in a way. Again, I was young and dumb. I was young and dumb. We were in an open relationship with Amber for your whole relationship or was it just at the trestle? It wasn't for our whole relationship. It, it started with that, no, the one I call Paige. I know it's not her name. Before Crystal, there was another girl. Another girl. Well, she was with me. Her name was Paige or something. I know it was a four letter name. I'm just gonna call her Paige because that's the name I, I remember. That Paige girl sent her money, sent her a Walmart gift card. She sent her things. Yeah, while well, she was with me. We weren't supposed to be in an open relationship after that. Then. And then she went to with Crystal. Yeah, Amber and Crystal would flirt publicly. <laughs> Um, I know a lot of people keep getting that confused and say I cheated. Like, why would I online, like, openly cheat 
on my partner. That is the weirdest Because thing. you are that kind of person. You are that kind of bitch because you don't give a shit about other people. You care about yourself. About your needs. That's why. Do you, I mean, Amber Lynn, that, 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 that's how low you go. You don't give a shit about other people. How it affects them. You'll publicly humiliate someone, steal their identity, steal, steal their, you know, just everything about them. And like I said, you're a virus. You don't give a, a, a virus doesn't give a shit about how it affects people. Whether it's public or private. A virus is a virus at the end of the day. We'll do as much damage as it can before it leaves. I've ever heard. I love you, but I love her. I want you, but I want her. My head hurts. My heart hurts. And then she met Crystal. Now, she was talking to Crystal about six or seven months before we, we broke up. No, actually, probably longer than that. Probably almost a year. Talking to her almost a year before Confession. I have a girlfriend, but I'm in love with someone else. Um, we actually met online. At the time, I was in a relationship. And Crystal, I added her, I guess. And she sent me a... Having Tarot be in love with me and being in love with these two girls might sound like a party. But it's definitely sick. One of the hardest things to deal with. Um, a message. She did flirt with me a little. I tried to explain to her. I was in a relationship. I'm not like that. I do not cheat. Um, I did not want to cheat on my girlfriend. As time went on, the relationship I was currently in was really just going downhill. She made me realize what true love was because I did fall in love with her. This might sound bad and crazy and weird, but with the with the permission of the girl I was with. Oh my God, that gave me chills. How beautiful. I'm glad you just got your happy ever after how, and how long you were. You talking to Crystal before you moved there, and did your ex know you talked to her? My ex said no. She even allowed Crystal to come visit me for a full weekend. My ex even knew I was intimate with her. She accepted that I was in love with someone else, but I still wouldn't le le let me leave. I knew Crystal for almost a year before I moved to be with her. She allowed Crystal to come and meet me. When Crystal came to visit Amber in Arizona, Amber admitted through an Ask FM post that the two of them had been intimate during that time even though Amber and Crystal were not supposed to be in an open relationship. I don't know, we had sparks and it just, I, I honestly never felt so happy in my life and everything just was perfect and I mean, I felt bad for the girl I was in the relationship with. I wanna hang out with Crystal Wines, lol. Crystal is coming to visit me. Just in my makeup and hair, gonna leave a, oh my God. Um... Crystal was there to witness it physically the things that Casey put me through, and I wish, I wish so badly, I'm sorry baby, I wish so badly that Crystal wasn't as shy as she was, because she's told me before I would love to make a video, but I just can't, because she has really bad social anxiety. She doesn't have to do a video, uh, she could do a community post, a Facebook. I would love to hear from Crystal myself, myself, and I would love to hear um, the truth, instead of this fabrication that Amber, uh, Crystal oh, is going to come to bat for me, no way, no way, no way, no how. I'm not considering you've had how many freaking partners now. This is the third one. The public has spoke out against you and say, yeah, you're an abusive asshole. You've done this. You've done that. You you have no morals whatsoever. You're like a virus. You're plague on, on, on humanity. That's what you are. That's what Amberlynn is. She's a plague on humanity. Look, post. Doesn't have to be a video. We all know she's shy. Amber keeps saying that Crystal saw firsthand how you treated her. What do you think she's talking about? Oh, I know exactly what she's talking about. It was when we were at the anime convention. And I like anime. I love anime. I'm a nerd. But we were at an anime convention, and I was on an anxiety attack. And I, we, me and Amber were still together, and I wanted my girlfriend at the time to comfort me. And Crystal got mad at it. Now, I understand why Crystal got mad about that. Because Amber wanted to, you know, spend time with her, and she came down for Amber, blah, blah, blah. But that's, that's what it was. So whatever she told Crystal, she told Crystal. Crystal bought her so many things when we were together. So many things. Oh, why not? Because the money didn't come in the mail. I'm sad. I was looking forward to it. I'm sorry. I was hoping it would come for you today. Crystal would even pay Amber's phone bill. So oh my god. And you know what? I think Crystal was on disability. So Crystal was using her disability money to pay for Amber. Something Amber had complained about previous when Amber's foster mother paid the bill late. My phone is probably getting shut off tomorrow, not fair at all. Because my foster mom likes to pay the bill late. Phone's on, thank you, Crystal. The one that stands out, because it's the most messed up one, was the freaking I 
paw touch. Does anyone she have a up on a touch? Like, it, she, there was an argument starting. So she goes outside talking to her. Comes in, oh, I made her cry. What happened? What, what, what made her cry? What the hell? Crystal was gonna bite her, and I paw touch. The argument was over how much gigabytes it had. And she got mad because Crystal asked, do you want this certain gigabyte or the 32 one? You know, the highest one. And she told Crystal, asking me that is like asking if you want a pink purse. She was so rude about that. It wasn't just, the, I mean, she went off after saying, the pink purse thing she went off on this poor girl and made her cry it was over 200 dollars hope cassidy succeeds in doing my my ipod today i'll be sad if not over 200 dollars. this girl is spending on amber that's not even with her yet yeah you should just be grateful for what you're getting why are you being like this six months after crystal visited amber amber made a facebook post claiming she was now officially in an open relationship. Two days after posting about her new relationship status, Amber and Casey would break up, and Amber would be headed to Virginia to be with Crystal. This further backs up Casey's claim that their open relationship had ended after Amber's fling with Paige. Now, Amber likes to claim that the last time she cheated on anybody was when she was 16 years old. However, according to Amber's own Facebook posts, she cheated on Casey with Crystal when she was in her 20s. So Casey and Amber enter an online relationship, Amber cheats on Casey with a girl in a hot tub before they meet. Casey and Amber begin an in-person relationship. Then Amber cheats on Casey with this page girl. Amber and Casey then enter a brief open relationship, and the open relationship ends after Paige and Amber break up. Amber then meets Crystal online. Amber and Crystal flirt publicly on Facebook, despite what Amber says. Crystal comes to Arizona to meet Amber. Amber admits her and Crystal were intimate. Then Amber and Casey enter another very brief open relationship, and two days later, Amber and Casey break up, and Amber heads to Arizona to be with Crystal. I just had to like clarify that that I'm not a cheater, and um, like I'm 32 years old, and I haven't cheated since I was 16. Bullshit. That's a lie. <laughs> After four years of dating, their terrible relationship would finally come to an end. I was a senior in high school. We had the homecoming party, whatever. I was a part of the anime club and a LGBT club, so I was doing things for both of us. I ended up staying late because there was a there was a dance afterwards, but I didn't want to go to dance. But I ended up staying late, and I came home. We got a huge argument about that, about me being out late. That's what led us to breaking up. Was that fact? And she broke up with me that night. Went with Crystal next day. That was it? That's not why she broke up with Casey. It's because she had in the wings Crystal. I don't know if Chris had to buy two plane tickets. All I know is we broke up. The next day, she gets on a she gets in a cab to the airport. She's with Crystal. She moved in with Crystal. Now, a week after the breakup, Amber posts to Facebook, saying how losing Casey is like losing a best friend. Uh, okay, I don't even know. I'm truly happy with Crystal, but I'm losing Cassidy. Is seriously like losing a best friend? Is this the is this for the best? I suppose. And that doesn't sound like... It's a totally different version, isn't it, from the video she's made here. It sounds like she's just escaped with her life. This, this horrible relationship for four years. She's escaped with her life. You just get out of it. And then a week later, I'm losing my best friend. So there's reasons why I doubt this story. Um, and that's a big one. They may have broken up, but this would not be the last time the pair would speak. Crystal and I broke up a little over a month ago. I'm sorry though, you were, you were, both were good together. What happened, if you don't mind me asking? She fell in love, out of love with me. She loved me as a person and cares about me, but it was just not working, I guess. I was blindsided. Damn I don't well. even, I mean, she what came you to do me now? after freaking three years of not talking. Three, four years of not talking. I get a random message from her one day, after her and Crystal broke up. Moving to Florida. Cool, well, what's in Florida though? A friend. Destiny. Girlfriend? Not yet, but probably. Cool, hope it works out this time. You never know. And I'm like, why yep. are you Question me? though, what made you tell me all this? Because you were an important part of my life. You were- And I said, at one point, not anymore. I got a few messages after that, and I tried to help her with Destiny. So this is Amber trying to keep her options open. 
that I'm not with Crystal. I'm gonna communicate with Casey. Keep that line chain like line open and see what happens in case uh th th this whole thing with Destiny doesn't work out. So this is a very manipulative tactic. Hey, the whatever thing. Despite Amber claiming to have been in an abusive relationship and multiple times, Amber unbelievably messaged Casey asking for sex tips. I know this is probably weird, but I really need to talk about this. So you're still the only person I've let touch me. I never even let Crystal, even after all the time we were together. I was too scared, too self-conscious, etc. I really want Destiny, the girl I'm going to be with, to be the next person I allow to do that to me. I'm scared though. Like, what do I do? I feel like I smelled bad when you did it to me. I shower every day now, so I'm different than I used to be. But it still worries the out of me. Again, I know this is so weird. You're the first person I trust to talk to about this though. Actually, the only person. And Casey replied, um, okay, uh, I'm at a loss for words. I would be too. <laughs> Just ask for sex tips. It is unbelievable. That's bad. <laughs> no, I believe my last message on there was embarrassing enough. And yes, I was, I was, uh, undecided about posting it because it is embarrassing. But that showed I didn't her, so I had to. I didn't want to. I mean, that was the proof right there. There's even a post where Amber says that Rist should get the death penalty. But then Amber is talking to Casey on Facebook and thinking she's the only person I can trust with sex tips. Maybe she wants Casey put to death after she's gotten the sex tips. She's just going to have to <laughs> Google uh, BBW sex tips. I know some good sites. <laughs> Text me. Casey, if you want to share. Wow, so he, you really are into BBW, so hit me up, dude. No, I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. More screenshots from Amber after his rebuttal video. <laughs> WTF, you know that you're lying in that video. No one knew who you were. No one knew who I was talking about in that video. I'm not sure why you'd post a video about that. I wasn't putting you on blast. I didn't want anyone knowing who you were. I deleted the video I made because I did not make it to attack you. I made it to share my story. You know exactly what you put me through, Cassidy. Julia knows, Crystal knows, Destiny knows. Even your mom knows, but she'll never admit it. Families stick together, right? Anyways, the video is down because that's a moment in my life that I'll never forget. You might have regretted our relationship, but I don't. I sure as hell am affected by the sh** you did to me, but you can't go back and change any of it. I just wish you luck and really hope you'll start admitting to the lies you're throwing everywhere. It's disgusting. I will be contacting YouTube because you have my full name in your YouTube video title and that's against the law for the purposes you're using it. You're lying, bullying, and using my full name when I didn't use yours. Delete the video before it gets deleted for you. I deleted mine out of respect for all parties. We seriously need to talk about this because it's gone too far and it's not fair to either of us. After we talk, we don't ever have to talk to each other again. All I've been doing is crying because people on the internet have the audacity to seriously act the way they are. They're saying horrible things to the both of us and snooping in all our business. She is blocked. She is blocked on, on Well, you're the one that put it out there, Amber. See, here's the thing about the internet, Amber. You don't want some you don't want people to you don't want you don't want your secrets known. Don't put it online. Cause after that it's fair game. Sorry. On, on everything. I the last thing I ever got from her. Where's my phone? September 16th, 2016. I don't know if you guys can see that. Amber was upset that people were messaging Destiny's family when it was Amber who. People are now contacting Destiny's family. People are calling the cops and calling PETA to get me, PETA, to get my animals taken from me. I feel hopeless. Please delete this video. Please delete the video. Start us all. And Casey only found out about the video from people messaging his fiance. I, okay, I'm gonna address Amber. If she's watching this, you have the potential to do great things in life. It's never too late to change in life. Be honest. Be honest with your fans, your subscribers. Be truthful. Don't lie. Even after all that had happened, Casey still wanted the best for Amber and wanted her to be honest with her fans for once. However, this was never going to be the case. This is really hard. I'm not a liar. Um, I lied here. Lie. I was protecting my feelings as much as I could. I wanted to protect Becky. Becky and I agreed that we would say that she bought the engagement rings. 
I know it's selfish of me to do. I do have a list of things I want to talk about. Um, I never said my dad was dead. Never said that <laughs> at all. Um, That's a lie. <laughs> What's the biggest lie you've ever told? That my dad died. I was young and stupid. I wanted attention from a certain friend. It was honestly the most immature lie I have ever told as well. Not cute. So if you guys remember my aunt situation, this was when I uploaded a video about how my aunt doesn't talk to me anymore because I'm fat. Oh, wow. How old were you? I was like 11. <laughs> oh my God. Wait, that's around the same time where I lied about my middle name. I pushed her away because of just who I am and how I am as a person. Really? Yeah, I was, okay, listen, you guys. I was in an all girls group home and they were like, is Amberlynn your first name? Ugh. I told you guys that Destiny has not gained weight since she's been with me. And I'm like, no. I mean, yes. And then they were like, okay, so what's your middle name? I had to think of something really quick. But she has gained weight since she's been with me. Katie. Wow, that's random. Amberlynn Katie Reed have been trying to protect her feelings. If you are trying to protect someone and you are lying to protect them, no. No. Something else I've lied about is the job oh I had in Florida. I lied to you guys and said I was a full time. I wanted you guys to be proud of me. Um, I don't care. Just a quick little video. Um, I've just seen Amber's Instagram Q and A thing. Um, because somebody asked her, "Do you still stand by your comments where you defended on Ask FM from years ago?" It's not a matter of you can't help how you feel. Actually, it is. It's a sickness, just like cancer, or depression, or obesity. It's a sickness. You cannot control sickness. You can get help, but that only goes so far. I mean, here's the thing. It is a sickness, but also, it's like, it's a crime. And even yeah, pedophiles can get help for the crime they commit okay there is help for it there there you know there are resources um i watched a documentary about it and I, and I was like you know it changed my opinion a little bit because i'm just like okay this is all not only but this is a crime and it's disgusting but also it's a sickness um and you know these were from people who are pedophiles but they're also like getting help for, in trying to get therapy you know to not be pedophiles i guess you know what i mean like um and to wait and stuff like that so to raise awareness for like you know you you can get help for this you know you, you don't this doesn't have to be your life basically um but i'm not defending pedophilia i think it's disgusting it's just, it's just disgusting and um but yeah there there is uh evidence that is also can be classified as a sickness so Amber isn't wrong about this. I'm just saying it's it's a crime, but it's also a sickness um, as well. And to justify it, Amber says, but like I said, I'm not justifying it at all. It, it's a crime. It's a, it's just it's just disgusting. It's a just let's say it's a disgusting sickness. By a, a father's friends, Amber, on your Ask FM. You've got two totally different stories about you being and it's not your father's friends. Hmm? What? I've been going through Amber's Ask FM, uh, doing a little series on the same channel, um, reading out the Ask FM stuff and trying to... I used to, but since I have been with Crystal, I haven't... It isn't something she does trick-or-treating, but we do dress up to Halloween and go. We were matching babies. We didn't dress up last year because I... Was bedridden and we didn't get to do anything. Oh, jeez. Make it funny and silly. Um, but while going through that, uh, there's been some pretty horrible things she said. One of them was um, she was she was defending. Pedophilia does not like cancer or depression or obesity. It is it's not, not like that. You're talking so because they are not. Yeah, terrible. it's not. Look at it is a sickness, but it's it's nothing like having cancer, depression, or obesity. You know this. I don't even know how to explain it, but I mean it's a crime. It is a crime because there are victims. It's evil. It is, but it's just like there is like scientific studies of it being an actual sickness. So like there's like a, a fine line, you know what I mean? Like it, I, I just know that there's 
ped the pedophilias is being like studied to kind of like figure out like what causes it like what causes somebody to take that step into it as a victim i know and it's not like that it's evil and wrong and should not be treated with sympathy first of all don't play a victim with someone who has been there done that thank you secondly your opinion is your opinion and mine is mine get over it so when that uploaded uh, people went to amber's uh, instagram and said do you still stand by the comments you made about on ask fm in 2014 Amber says, trigger warning and trauma dumping. No, I don't. I was 22 years old, trying to understand how people can be so awful. I was actually assaulted by my father's friends when I was younger and talked about this in therapy recently, about how I wish I could understand why those things happened to me. I won't ever understand. These people are sick and forever deserve prison time. In 2014, mm -hmm. I was yeah. 22. I think she was 23, but uh, I was 22 and... They, they, yeah, they are sick and they deserve prison time. But, um, you know, we, we still... As a, in the sci well, I'm not a part of the like the scientific community, scientific community, but it is being studied, like I said, and it needs to be studied because it needs to be find. You know, we need to find a solution as to, you know, find to figure out like why a person would do this. You know, is there something in their brain chemistry that is leading them to do the these horrible things? Highly trying to make excuses for what happened to me. I saw, I saw this. Uh, she says, "Part of his friends." Uh, and it was very different to what she said on Ask FM. So I made a video. So people, and I know people went to Abba's Instagram and asked her about the other two different stories. Um, can you clarify what, what's this? And she's blocked lots of them. Um, blocked them all, blocked me. Um, yeah, and then she, this is very soon after, she clearly asks herself this question. It sounds like she asks herself this question. Uh, on a Q&A, uh, she says, I was also and over time I was able to remember things I couldn't before. Amber says, I'm so sorry you experienced that. I also completely relate to this. My therapist has taught me more about how trauma can mess with your memory pretty bad and recounting the events that gave you trauma don't always look the same each time because you sometimes remember all the details and sometimes you don't. Just remember not to be hard on yourself. I beat myself up way too much in the past about the essay I've experienced in my life and my memories around it. I'm just grateful for my mom because I told her about it when I was 12 and from that point on, I had someone in my corner. I was afraid to tell anyone else. If you or someone you know is experiencing an essay, please talk to someone and never feel ashamed of what happened or how your memory chooses to handle the trauma. So she's saying there, you might remember the details differently. But uh, what Amma said is very different on Ask of M. Somebody says, how old were you when you were and who did it? Amma says, I was six and it was my cousin. So it's my father's friend. So that's remembering the details very differently. Then there's another one. This is how it's it. I don't know what to believe. It's like she's saying she was molested at twelve by her. Sorry, no, I shouldn't say M. She was uh, she was S A'd. Sorry, by when she was twelve. But then now she's saying by her father's friends. But then now she's saying it's six by a cousin. God, I'm so confused. This is what I'm saying. She's not a rely a reliable narrator to her own story. How old was your cousin? What was the outcome? Did he go to she did not go to jail because he, we didn't turn her in. She was a young adult. I really don't want to talk about it anymore. How old was your cousin and what was the outcome? Did he go to jail? She did not go to jail because we didn't turn her in. She was a young adult. I really don't want to talk about it anymore. So there's, there's another different detail. So she thought, we didn't turn her in. So it was, a, it was a cousin. Another one, the person who made you, were they a family member or someone you just trusted or neither? Emma says a family member, yes. And the next one, what's the most disturbing thing that has ever happened to you? And again, Amber says I was it when I was seven. So that's very different from my father's friends did it. I don't want to say it's very different. Um, so maybe she's remembering the details differently, but um, there you go anyway. Very, very different. Maybe it was both. That's what I'm saying. Maybe she was essayed by a cousin, but maybe she was also essayed by father's friends. So, I mean, you can't like automatically refute and say, well, she... Because she's lying and this story and that. It could be both. And I'm not, and there is, you know, there is truth to the argument, like how people process trauma. And sometimes you remember, sometimes you don't. But it's like, there is truth to that. So it's just like, you know, it's, it's just, it's really hard to, let's say, respond to that because it's just like i don't want to invalidate somebody else's 
somebody's abuse, but with like when you're a chronic liar who lies pretty much about everything, it's like it's hard to believe what that person is saying. So I'm trying I'm I'm trying to be fair and not like invalidate somebody's abuse this person's abuse, Amber Lynn's abuse. Uh but past, you know, abuse, but I'm also like, yeah, but you're a chronic liar. So it's like what is the truth and what isn't? Um, you lied about SA. No, I didn't. I was by my cousin when I was seven years old. I was seven years old and I did not tell my mom till I was twelve. Uh your cousin or father's friend. Wait, what? Oh, uh. I think she's forgotten what you posted. Uh, your cousin or father's friend? Wait, what? She's the one who said a father's friends, which is obviously forgot. No, it was not my dad's friend. It was a cousin. And when it comes to like sexual harassment, a lot of my dad's friends, yes. Harassment? I thought you okay, said. Okay, so I was just saying now is it, the, the waters are so muddy here. It's just like, okay, so you were essayed by a cousin when you were six or seven okay um sorry cousin from norton okay um for six or seven but you were uh, harassed like, appropriately harassed by your father's male friends and i'm not saying that didn't happen it could possibly be ha have happened okay but you have stated in the past that you were also essayed by your father's friends when in, in fact it was just appropriately harassed you know um verbally i don't know like physically and verbally harassed by your father's friends assault let let me have a look at the post i was sexually assaulted by my father's friends she's got me doubting myself but I was never, like, from what I remember, memories are kind of, like, fade in here and there. I was never sexually or physically touched by my father's friends. No. Um, I was actually molested by a female. Is it just me? Or did you say that really weird? Um, I was actually molested by a female. So it was not a he. Amber admits to falsely accusing people. Oh, me Ugh. saying it was my dad's friend. A hundred thousand percent. I said that for a long time. Yes, I did. Because this cousin lived with me and my parents and my brother. So for a long time, when I was younger, like especially my teenage years, I did say it was someone that was not related to me. Yes, I did. So she said it was a father's friends when it wasn't, but then it did later on. I think. I can't remember. I'm confused. <laughs> so why? Uh, I yes, I did. Um, Miss Natalie, I think you were confused. I said I was molested by a cousin, but I was really, um, like harassed. I don't know the best way to describe that by a lot of my dad's friends while in, um, while I was a teenager. Yes. Said assaulted. Definitely said assaulted, not harassed. Assaulted. It's semantics here. It's it's wordplay. Which is all serious claims. So when I yes. say that my dad's friends really, like assaulted me, I mean that in the sense of like sexually harassed me. That's not assault. Thank you. That is a completely different situation compared to when I was molested when I was a child. That is a completely different story. Oh, well, that's gosh. definitely not what Amber said. She said assaulted, not harassed, assaulted. And they're two very different things. Um, when you were harassed by your dad's friends as a teenager, did they ever touch you? So trigger warning, they would like touch my leg, um, like mess with my hair, like put it behind my ear. I was never really or physically touched by my father's friends. No. So now it's there's no sexual anything. I was never actually or physically touched by my father's friends. No. Does she not think people are going to look back something she wrote a week earlier and compare it to the video? She keeps everything up. Um, touch my arm, brush against me on like on purpose. Um, because was... she literally thinks that we're that dumb that we don't see. And she literally forgets what she says, too. So it's just like, it's so ridiculous. She is definitely a clown. Clown behavior never sexually or physically touched by my father's friends no so i was um physically essayed um when i was six or seven years old um it was my cousin who did it and she was a female um so then in a q a on instagram um i said that i had like when i lived with my dad um when i was 14 
my dad had a lot of like men who were on lots of different types of drugs, different types of drugs. Sorry, I'm starting to get a little flustered. When I said that they would essay me, um, when I use the A word, assault. Don't tell me she's about to redefine the word assault. She is, isn't she? Oh, God. Yeah. Um, yeah, she is. I consider harassment as an assault. Assault just means you made someone scared. So again, I'm going to read No, that you cannot change the definition of words, Amberlynn, to fit suit your narrative. It's disgusting. You are disgusting. Assault just means you made someone scared. Unless it's in the dictionary, I'm not going to go with Amber's definition. Hmm, wrong. Oh, look, the definition of liar. It's the fault of Amber's face. As a 14-year-old <laughs> girl being hit on men in their 30s, I was terrified. He's so hilarious. Oh my god, like this, you know, oh my god, I love it. I was scared all the time. So for someone, a man, um, Snowflake, to be questioning if I went through that as A, a little girl, as a six and seven year old, and B, as a teenager who was 14, you are disgusting. You are everything wrong in this world. Because those stories are true and they did happen to me. And this is why victims do not speak up. And again, people are twisting my words. Or some play victim when some might give me a second your opinion is your opinion and mine is mine. Get over it. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. And that will continue to happen. Oh. Well, it wouldn't be the first time she's used the wrong word. What did I think about Amber's poem? Can you explain the rain and petals <laughs> eavesdrop poem? Yes. I went through something. I decided to share my journey of an abusive relationship. And um, my ex decided to deny all of it, which I don't blame him because why would you confess? No one confesses to being abusive. Um, so I was, I got scared because so many people were thinking I was lying. I became ashamed of sharing my story and scared. So I deleted the video. So I ended up filming a, I think it was like a 23 minute video, um, kind of replying to his rebuttal. And so after I filmed it in my gut, I felt like this isn't right. I personally don't want to keep going back and forth. So the best way for me to express how I feel is poetry. Speaking up by Amber Lynn Reed. Let's see, who does everyone believe? Let's start gambling our life, rolling dice like knives on a platter. Using my name to put yours on lights? No, I am not perfect in any way. Just admit you were wrong and play a different song. My life is my story, but yet you've written a chapter. I am my own narrator, yet you stole the pen to deny, to lie. Seems to me that the only quote that people mention, here are the facts, you lied about your name right off the bat, but still called me insane, is the one where I did admit R-A-P-E, rain and petals, eavesdrop. I used the wrong word. That maybe I did use the wrong word. Rain and petals, eavesdrop. I used the wrong word. Rain and petals, eavesdrop. I used the wrong word. I should have used the word coursed. Why, why can she never say that word, right? Coursed. Coursed. Coursed light. Sponsored by Coursed Light. Coursed, which um is where you are forcing I'm someone trying to, to do keep, something. I'm that trying to remain serious, but he's hilarious. I'm sorry. I just had hard time with this whole thing i've cried i've laughed i've loved i've lost i mean rain this, really the, this poem is a meme by at this point no one takes this seriously because you were not r-a-p-e-d by um casey who you're claiming you know i mean that's just it's undisputable at this point that you were not ab abused or r-a-p-e-d by casey so horrible for me i've grown i've learned i've moved on healing along the way if you go back and listen to the poem you guys will hear in that poem that i didn't lie knowing what you did and saying you didn't and that he was the one who was lying such a lovely story that's completely unforgivable casey now has to go through the rest of his life with a small percentage of people but still people thinking he's a all because she used the wrong word. Like, unforgivable. Amma just thought, oh, I didn't say Casey's. But, every, but people who have been following Amber up to this point knew exactly who she was talking about. Mm -hmm. Like I said, Amber doesn't care about the reper repercussions. 
She only cares about being the victim. She is this is she is so sick in the head. There's I, there's not even an adequate word in the adequate adequate word in the dictionary to describe how sick this woman is. It's absolutely disgusting. And it kind of feels like she's gotten away with it. She's still making videos, she's still on the internet. The story that mm -hmm. the, the video yeah. is just lies you can prove, and people still believe the rest of it still believe that the rest of the abuse. It's absolutely disgusting, and I feel very sorry. Take consolation in the fact that there's only a very, very, very small percentage of people who believe it. Because these people are new and they don't know. But as time goes on, and as the lies continue, and as Amber continues to pull the wool over people's eyes, people are, those people are gonna are gonna seek out the truth, and then they'll find out. It's gonna take something pretty substantial, in my humble opinion, to get Amber Lynn off the internet, off YouTube. It may have to be a like Onision level kind of like discovery channel documentary kind of thing but you know anything i mean like i said if a network ta like network picks this up amber's done for good for good sorry for casey what's even worse is there's a um, there's a clip out there of amber singing the poem rain and petals these drop pa, pa. she was singing this poem that's about being. And it was on a live stream, I think. Yeah, it was. During, during a live stream, she's singing this poem about being. It's insane. It's insane. Oh, God, she's singing about being. Ugh. I never, like, you know what, though? Like, I know. And, and this is like, because, you know, I came in late. Like, you know, like, towards the end of Becky and Amber's relationship, like 2019. You know, um,. Like, you know, late 2018, you know, early 2019. So I I didn't, for a long time, didn't understand the reference between behind the Raiden Petals eavesdrop. I just thought it was a stupid poem. I didn't understand the significance. And now that I've watched this, you know, this, this series and the, the interview with Casey, I understand now. And it's disgusting. Now it's just a whole new meaning. Oh, my God. Even after all their time together, and after Amber asking for sex tips, Amber still didn't have any respect for Casey as a person. Now, I did try to come out to her as transgender before, and she just did not have it. She was mad about it. So when I went to go tell my fiancé, I was scared to death. Why? Because of the way Amber acted when I tried to tell her. Little beard. I hate that ball patch. See that? See that? I had an ex-girlfriend named Cassidy. She's not like a girl. Like, her, she taped down her boobs on purpose, so they'd always think that was a boy, so it's just really weird, because I'm not into that. They'd have to be like, I don't want to like that. <laughs> when they asked me that, why I wasn't just, you know, why didn't I just stay a girl and just like... She's sitting there laughing at everything. You can't believe someone can snoop so, so low. Gosh, people these days losing a good friend due to her not being real, as in she faked her identity for 11 years is beyond her... Are you fucking kidding me? Guys, because that's not that's not what I am inside. That's not what I feel inside. I want my inside to match the outside. Well, your ex said you got mad when he came out as trans. I'm honestly not. Now Amberlyn trying to act like an advocate. Like you didn't give a shit about about Casey coming out as trans. You didn't give a shit. You wanted Casey to be a, a girl. When Casey wanted to be a boy. What gives you the right to make a person feel bad because they don't identify with their gen you know, the gender that they they were biologically born with? I know there's I mean I'm not gonna get into gender politi politics on this channel. Okay. But it's just like, you know, I, it's like, I, I can't, I, I'm just so, I'm so disgusted, you know, 
you know, Casey at the time was a teenager trying to figure things out, you know, re realizing that, oh, you know, I'm actually trans. I actually want to be a boy, you know, a boy. I want to be a man, you know, I want to be a father. Like, and for Amber just to be like, you're never going to be those things. Not because, you know, just because Amber Lynn wanted Casey to be a certain way for her benefit and didn't give a shit about how Casey felt about herself. That's another whole line of abuse right there. I've seen anyone mm. less traumatized from uh, an abusive relationship. When people bring that up, oh my god. Literally, he was not trans when we were together. Ugh. I'm sorry. I'm... Yes, he was. He was in the, let's say, in the beginning stages of it. You misgender people. It was one person who literally said that they don't care if they get called he or she. It was a f***ing accident. Like, people literally just won't get over it. Like, I, I love how you guys think that you know this person. That's the funniest of it all. I think it's very clear who's come off worse out of that relationship. And it's not Amber. I was in a freaking... When... <sighs> I'm trying to calm down. When me and Amber broke up, I was distraught. Because that was the first serious relationship I ever had. I was so messed up from the abuse, the mental abuse, the verbal abuse. I had to go and see psychiatrists because I was having anxiety attacks every day. I couldn't even be in my classroom. I had such mental issues from being with her that I ended up for a weekend from Friday to Monday in a mental hospital. I, I don't like to relive all that. I don't I mean. This is what gets me. This is what gets me. Casey had to go to a mental hospital because of Amber. Oh, God, am I feeling punchy. I feel very strongly about this because I've been in a mental hospital myself. And those places are not fun. And my situation was completely different, but like... I'm so angry. I'm so angry because Casey did not deserve this. She's a child. A child. Trying to figure things out. And you get someone like Amber who takes advantage. I still relive it, like, every so often. Like, if someone tries to reach for something, like, over my head, like, just to get, like, cereal or something, I flinch. I down myself a lot. And all those feelings come back tenfold, knowing I could be in the same room as her, in a courtroom with her. I, I don't like it. it. It just, it makes me, it makes my anxiety go up. But that was it. I was so messed up from her. I have very, very low self-esteem. I don't feel smart. I'm still messed up from this. I feel worthless and stupid sometimes or just like no one cares i don't know what to i mean i know you're not supposed to say you regret anything but i do regret that relationship full-heartedly immensely because of everything that happened in it i don't care to be her friend i don't care to talk to her i just want to be left alone and i want her to quit trying to destroy my life quit trying to make herself look like a victim i know she was in foster care i understand that but she acts like the world owes her stuff. And I hate to say it, I hate to sound mean, I'm not trying to bash any of you guys who were in foster care or had a bad life, but the world doesn't care what you went through. I regretted staying through the if I Casey's not wrong. He's not wrong. The world doesn't care what you get what you've gone through. You're not owed anything. You you want things in life, you gotta work for it. And it's it's not oh, it's not like a bad thing to have people help you get there, you know, and to support you. That I mean, that's different. But to think that the world literally owes you and that you're entitled to ruin a person's life to try to get there—that's fucked up. But think of it this way, you guys: if you've watched the interview, Casey is in such a better place now 
She's, he's at peace. He's, has a degree. He's working a good job. He's, he's hot. He's, you know, do, doing his side, you know, hot, things on the side and, and, you know, pursuing his dreams. That's the best revenge, you guys. That is the best revenge. I can go back in time and slap my 15 year old self. I would. I would. So. I might cry about it now, but I've healed. I have, but it's definitely like memories that make me sad, but I've healed from it and I'm stronger because of it and I've learned because of it. And I know the bad in my life made me wiser. I just, oh my God, you literally, we watched Casey's video, me, Dana, Destiny, and Becky all together. This was probably a little over two weeks ago and Destiny was clapping back. Destiny's like, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's not true. I don't know. I don't want to get into all that. I don't know. You know, like, I just know what she has told everybody else. So, I mean, I don't know. And Because the only reason why Destiny was clapping back is because she thought you were telling the truth, Amber. But now that, you know, Destiny's grown and she's out of your, the relationship with you, I'm sure she, I mean, I can't remember if she's, if she's refuted what she said, but I don't know. The person, her ex, um, the evidence video. I know this is probably weird, but I really need to talk about this. So you're... Okay, okay. Sorry, we've already gone through this. That they posted. I didn't know that she was messaging them. Um, plain and simple. I did not know that until she posted that video. So. I don't know. It's just not... It's not fair. And this is something I deal with all the time because you Google my name and the sh that accusations. Da -da -da -da, and it just sucks. I'm sitting over here. Best friends with Crystal, who is my ex. I'm sitting over here, super, super good friends with Destiny, who is also my ex. Do you think that if I ever... ever and look at where you're at now. Crystal, Destiny, Dana, Becky, they've all deserted you. You are alone, having to rely on your mother and your family. Drinking, doing drugs. Anybody thinks that Amber Lynn isn't experiencing her karma right now, just think of it this way. She is alone, living a miserable life, being a fucking death fat. And having nothing to show for it. That is the karma. Ever, 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 like, ever. It's a slow, painful karma. Of Cassidy? That... Because when people have someone, they... they several times and i would also crystal i would have a destiny do you think that crystal and destiny would still be my friends the thing is if i was lying i would have never said her name i would have never said her name if i was lying that already once again misgendering her i'm sorry 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 misgendering him a bad choice i would have been like so this one girl i was with and i would have made the story a lot more entertaining wow i didn't start this um i'll use the word journey i didn't start this journey of making videos about amber trying to turn people against her i genuinely thought i'm gonna turn the haters into fans there are plenty of haters i thought i'm gonna make a nice series about her show all the good that's in her and it's gonna turn it all around so we're gonna help her lose the weight She's going to have loads of fans. She's going to be the best version of herself. It's going to be a great success story. What an idiot I was. Snowflake just feels a bit stupid for the whole thing. And I was an idiot because everybody warned me. And most people did. And I, and I thought, no, no, they're wrong. I can, I can sense the good in her. The whole Snowflake Amber thing reminds me of Star Wars, where Luke thought there was still some good in Darth Vader. And he finds good in him. And it ruined my reputation a little bit, because not everybody, but there was there was a few people saying, um, this is a bad move for you, Snowflake. Um, trying to be pally with her and, and associate with her, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a good look. I was one of those people. Right. I was one of those people who were like bad-mouthing Snowflake, because I was like, dude, you... How could you even want to pal around with Amber Lynn Reed? Like, how? Yeah, I, w I admit, I was one of those people. I, I spoke out and said something, some things on my channel. I was like, how? <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> like, there is no, you know, I, I think, you know. 
this is hard for me to say because I'm not the kind of person that after hearing all of this t today there's no hope for Amber Lynn Reed I'm going to definitely say that there's no hope she will never change and this is after not only watching this video and the you know the videos of you know the the the, the interview but also Amberlyn's response it was a very blanket response to everything. She basically said, "I wish every, I wish Casey well, but I don't. You know, I've grown. I, I, I did stupid things, but I've grown now, and I don't want to talk about this anymore." I feel like you know now after watching this, it's a, it's like another snub towards Casey. I'm not going to you know dignify these obvious lies that I've told all the criminal offenses that I've brought upon Casey and her family. You couldn't, she can't though, really can she? Like she has to make blanket statements because to save face basically. But it, I feel like it is like another, it's, it's another, another, you know, snub towards Casey. She does, she can't even muster up the courage to tell the truth still. What a coward. It wasn't a good look, but I just thought I could do some good with her. You, you can't... Know, nothing. You can't fix somebody that doesn't know if they're broken. Or doesn't... Or the, who doesn't want to be fixed. And I'm, I'm done with it now. My joy and fun with the whole Amber thing we were trying to do has faded. Gone. It's like me t-shirt. Oh, I want to see this. I see. I've watched every video on her YouTube channel. Oh, I thought he was going to rip it. Times because of the, the editing for the, the shit by the algorithm series I've done. I've watched every video. I've, I've seen all of her Facebook posts, all the Ask FM posts, Tumblr, everything. I've seen everything she's done online. Wow. And people were right, and I was wrong. There's no good in her. Some people will still be a fan. Even after this, there'll, there'll be people out there who, who still support her and still think she's amazing. But if you think she's amazing... Wait till we get the crystal. Ooh. I mean, I even sent her a message. Oh, uh, maybe five, six years. That just gave me chills. That just literally gave me chills. Like my, I'm getting heart palpitations. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I need to see the next video. I need to see the next episode now. Like, oh my god, I'm so invested. <laughs> to go with you as a crystal, saying I hope you don't do the crystal what she does to me. I wish I never deleted that message because in that message she admitted she had the crystal once. Oh my god. 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 Oh. Thanks very much, Amber. I'm baby. Out. <laughs> wow. Okay, that was... Okay, um, that was a lot to unpack, okay, um, and there's more to come. I, I This is going to be a very, I'm going to admit, very hard to sit through, but I'm willing to do so for, you know, because I do react to Amberlynn, and I'm invested in this, and uh, I'm so glad that this, ha this is happening. It finally, it's, it's like, it feels like justice is finally being served in some way. Maybe not in a legal sense right now. Maybe it, 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 there'll be a legal ramifications down the line. Maybe she'll do something at some point. But if, the, it, you know, if, if, if this is the, you know, if this is all that we're going to get justice wise, that's fine by me. But, um. Amber, you are, without a doubt, the most disgusting, vile human being that I've ever come across in my life. I don't know you personally. I don't want to know you personally, but I feel like I've watched you since, you know, I've, since like late 2018, 20 to like, you know, early 2019. I feel like I know you already. And there is, 
after listening to this, all this, con I mean, I've done the, I've done this video, the, um, uh, interview, and then the, um, Amberlin's response in one day. So I've, 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 a lot of content that I've, that I've had to listen to and, um, It's just, oh, there's no hope for her. She is, Amberlynn, you are not a good person by any stretch of the imagination. And so all I can say is, to end this video, is that for those who still believe that Amberlynn can change, don't waste your energy, don't waste your time, don't waste the thought. Amberlynn is, ir is irredeemable. Anyways, um, the, uh, without, uh, until next time, you guys, uh, I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys have a wonderful New Year's and, you know, um, I love you guys and I thank you for the, the love and support. And Mr. Snowflake, I want to thank you for your hard work and dedication and for what you're doing because it needs to be done somebody the fact that you've taken up the mantle is just amazing like I, I wish i had the the time and the energy to do so but um i i wouldn't even know where to begin to even make this 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 cat this level of uh yeah uh, content i mean the, the caliber of his content is just incredible to me and uh Maybe this is the finally going to be the nail in the coffin for Amberlynn Reed's channel, but I doubt it. But um, one can only hope, right? <laughs> so, uh, toodaloo, my loves. I'll see you guys next time.